first section of about 20 minutes. So I'll give an overview and then it'll be followed by uh, on Eugenia, who is our coordinator for MOOC and OER. We have uh, Inche Amin, our coordinator for blended learning and training. And we have our pertimbangan pengarah, uh, Puan Salmi, who will talk about the pembelajaran teradun gantian. Okay. So, next slide, please. Zul, can you please move? Yeah. <coughs> So, so it's a very brief, very brief uh, intro. Uh, Pusat E Pembelajaran uh, comprises of actually a very small team. And we have our Timbalan Pengarah, Puan Sami. Uh, we have our Puan Eugenia, as I say, coordinator for MOOC and OER. Uh, Inche Amin, blended learning and training. Uh, we have uh, Inche Jufatli. Uh, main help desk is actually managed by Inche Zul. And we have our uh, Inchit Wajir, okay. uh, then our Alex as well as the Fazil. Please move on. Yes, uh, our e-learning coordinators. So we have Dr. Sarima from Actas A. Terima kasih for organizing this. And everyone here are very important uh, as coordinators uh, to help execute uh, all our activities. Thank you. Move on. Uh, our mission and vision are all aligned uh, to our KRA in the UMS, as well as our Malaysian Education Blueprint, as well as uh, the Pan 2.0. Uh, as you can see, the mission is to actually cultivate a meaningful and conducive e-learning environment. So times are changing. It's very dynamic landscape. So we are very sensitive to whatever changes. And please, uh, from your side of FSA, whatever new development from your discipline, please also update us so that we can get ourselves adjusted. Our vision is to attain UMS the aspiration to be innovative university of global standing, and we stand upon the globalized online learning, the GOL, shift number nine of our Malaysian education blueprint. Move on, please. So in Pusat uh, E-Pembelajaran, we have uh, seven strategic plan and 20 action plan. You can uh, click in to go into detail concerning this. Okay, move on. This is the Malaysian Education Blueprint and shift number nine is very important for us, the Globalized Online Learning, GOL. And this is where actually Pusat E-Pembelajaran uh, helps to execute uh, GOL as the enabler to bring out the outcome of graduates that we want. So, go on. Yeah. Whatever that we do is actually based upon the pun. This is the Japan uh, material. The links are given. Uh, please take the opportunity, even afterwards, to at least just go through it. Okay, but all our KPI are based upon the pan 2.0. Move on. Yes, so these are our KPI from the uh, pan uh, blended learning, MOOC, and OER. Move on. So, with respect to blended learning, for example, the blue line is actually our national target. So, for until uh, this year, is 60%. They expected, you know, blended learning to be implemented among the university awam. And UMS has achieved 97%. So for this, we have to congratulate uh, all the lecturers and thank you to all the Deccan uh, for helping to achieve this 97% among the top in UMS Awang. Thank you. Okay, go on, please. So with respect to uh, FSSA uh, for last semester and this semester, uh, it is 100%, 100%. So apparently, we like to say a big congratulations to Prof. Dekan as well as all our colleagues in FSA for this excellent achievement. So, because of this, uh, we are going to move on to another level of blended learning for PTG. Okay, please move on. 
So there you are, the achievement throughout the years in FSA. Very well done, excellent work. Thank you. Move on. Now, uh, the other KPI is the OER. And the OER uh, in FSA, we have uh, 36. All in, we have over 1,300. So we believe that uh, this year, uh, it will be more than 100 OER coming from FSA. How will it be achieved? Let's have a look. Move on, please. So this is the repository. Once again, our repository is very robust. Anything that you upload over here, please remember it is called up by Google Search. It is also called up by Google Scholar. So this is the window to the academic world uh, for UMS. One of the windows. Okay, continue. So please remember that anything that you upload into the OER repository, uh, you will report uh, as in the SMPPI, and then you register in ELMPT as a non-index publication. So all your OER, whether it be video, whether it be uh, article or notes or PowerPoint, they are actually non-index publication. Of course, you're going to follow by the meaning of the open licensing. So this is where afterwards uh, Point Eugenia will show you in detail uh, how you can upload materials that will be verified by Penerbit as OER. The ver verification is not done by us, it's by Penerbit. Please move on. Okay, then the other KPI is the MOOC. So at the moment we have 19 and under FSSA, uh, how many do we have? Okay, so there are those who are interested who will come in. Please remember that uh, again, Point Eugenia will show you uh, how to, those who are interested, okay, there's a link for you to just click it and fill in the form and you'll be invited and we will help you hand in hand to complete your, your MOOC. Please move on. Yeah, okay, so step by step, uh, uh, the links are given there. This PowerPoint will be given to you. Just click in and then you just follow the step. Okay, please move on. Yeah, Point Eugenia afterwards will go through on more detail concerning the procedure. Move on. We have uh, facilities in uh, Pusat E Pembelajaran uh, to help you produce your video. Please move on. So again, the MOOC, you know, once it's produced, uh, it will be in SMPPI and you register it as a publication where it has got a value of 1.1. Wow, that is uh, almost an academic textbook. Right? So it is gazetted and it is recognized that because uh, to produce a MOOC, you may need at least half a year, you know, to really produce it well. So it, it has got a high value there. Continue, please. There will be challenges as long as we are doing things online uh, with either blended learning or with uh, MOOC or with OER or anything that is online. And that is, uh, we must, our cognitive domain, uh, we need to bring our students to the higher order thinking level. So this is our challenge. What kind of questions, you know, that we should set and so on. Especially these days, uh, if you remember, you understand, you apply. If you make use of a check GPT, you know, put in all your exam questions, hey, they're able to come up with excellent answers for you. So how are we able to assess our students' uh, cognitive development so that, you know, it is not AI actually bringing in the answers? These are our challenges as we go along. Move on, please. The activity theory framework and the social constructivism, this one actually uh, govern our learning management system in ITEL as well as the Smart UMSP3. Uh, you can see in the diagram, for example, the subject are the student, the outcome, the objective. So our students are actually in a community within the online environment. So if we set the type of uh, rules you know, within the community, in the type of agrihan uh, tugas among themselves, then bringing in the right tools, bringing in the right pedagogy, bringing in the right approach, bringing in the right tools, uh, maybe uh, apps and so on, you will bring in different kind of outcome. So 
different uh, discipline have a different apps and the different rules and different division of labor, I guess. So whatever that you have done, you can uh, apply accordingly. Okay, the most important is your own learning design. Okay, the tools, the apps are all just tools only to come in to support and to enhance. Okay, sometimes paper and pencil might be good enough. Okay, move on. Again, you know, one of the big challenges is uh, lecturers are reporting they have problem of engagement with the students uh, when they're doing online. And because of the quote, quote, uh, encouragement from our JPT, Jabata uh, Tinggi, to have at least, you know, 30% of our course are having online. So we need to tackle this challenge. So, for example, you know, in terms of uh, cognitive engagement, how could we have problem solving online? How could we have critical thinking online? And things like that. How could we also have fun and also uh, enthusiasm and confidence online? Okay, so these are some of the challenges that uh, are just been addressed also by Inse Aminuddin. Okay, please move on. Yeah, so we all you understand our one stand up on TPEC. Uh, TPEC here refers to the, you know, the three circles are on the right hand side. We are all the content expert. And then we have our different uh, approaches of uh, teaching and learning, our pedagogy. Then we look for the appropriate technology to come and support us. So what we mean to say is that uh, pedagogy, our own learning activities, our own learning design is first place. Then we think of what technology to use. Please move on. So example, this is one link that you can just click into and uh, this person called uh, Alan Carrington, okay? The center there is actually the Bloom Taxonomy, and you can see that he tried to list out uh, to support educators on how to make use of uh, activity, uh, certain apps, you know, to support different activities so as to realize certain learning outcome. Move on. Example, uh, look at Create. Okay, so for example, at the highest level of uh, the cognitive domain of Bloom Taxonomy, so the action groups refers to the course learning outcome, the type of activities that we need to do to help to realize our learning outcome, and what are the tools that actually can come in, what are the apps that can come in. Okay, move on. If you visit uh, our Pusat E Pembelajaran, so there is the slogan, learning design first, technology second. Walaupun we are encouraging uh, the use of technology, but we are still emphasizing that technology uh, is second. Uh, our pedagogy, our learning design is first. Okay, move on. So this is a place, uh, TLCOP, Telcop, is again a community where uh, you, you go into this website, you can see all the faculties are listed. And you can see our colleagues who have mutually shared concerning how they make use of our technology and enable learning uh, to realize different kind of learning outcome. And every one of us can participate. There's a link in the first paragraph. Click it, fill in the Google form, and we will help uh, to support <coughs> by putting up your materials over here. Uh, this is a very important uh, community of practitioners uh, website. During that time, our Prof. Uh, TNCA, Prof. Uh, Rashid Mayer, uh, was very concerned on how, due to the pandemic, everybody, you know, are isolated. How could we have this community of uh, communication among ourselves as a support? So this is actually what it's all about, to sub mutually support one another. Okay, go on, please. Okay, Zoom, move on. Yeah. We have a lot of publications. So this is one of them for our students on using the technology enabled learning in UMS. It's all available on our website. Move on. In our website, we have also the policy, policy called the inclusive uh, o OER policy. And you can see the slogan up there, UMS actually coordinated with uh, Commonwealth of Learning, coordinated with UNESCO, coordinated with Kementerian, uh, our JPT, 
and if all the University of Awam, in the picture there is actually all the University of Awam. So together, uh, UMS actually took the lead to come up with this national, not international IOER policy that is now benchmarked by UNESCO Paris. It is also available online. Uh, those of us who are interested to see how our electrical resources can also be more made accessible uh, to and more inclusive to all students, especially those who are also OK, OKU, then refer to this. Thank you. Go on. Yeah, we have a help desk, okay, and we are always ready to help. Ever ready assistance as our Zoom, okay? Very, very, always ready to help. Okay, thank you. Go on. Okay, I, my sharing is only until here, and I'd like to, to end up by uh, playing this particular launching that we had concerning ITEL and also our PTG. Let's have a look at it. It's a short one. No sound, Zoom. No sound, yeah. Introducing a learning management system, ITEL, version 4.0, University Malaysia Sabah. ITEL at UMS Interactive, Innovative, Technology-Enabled Learning. The UMS Learning Management System is part of the Digital Learning and Teaching Space Initiative. ITEL at UMS was developed with the joint efforts of the Department of Information Technology and Communication, JTMK, and the Center for E-Learning, PEP. Introducing you to our new look. Experience new heights of education. Reach out to the most competent and passionate mentors. Great learning experience. Categorized activities or resources. Make it easy for users to add materials according to learning objectives. We will send you a notification to keep you updated. Addo Editor. Enhanced accessibility for screen readers and keyboard navigation and Moodle's text editor. I tell, learn remotely from anywhere. Thank you. Prop uh, Cholan, this is my uh, section over here. So 
I will now pass it to Dr. Sarima. Yeah. Our next uh, sharing will be by Eugenia or by Sami. Eugenia, Prof. Yeah, uh, it'll be me. <laughs> okay, so I'll be sharing MOOC first before we go through PTG and also ITEL. Okay, hold on. Yeah, I'm going to share my. I think Zoom need to, because I'm not the host, so they don't allow me to share. Uh, Zoom? Okay, already passed the presentation. Yeah. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yes, very clear. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm going to just open this uh, and present this. So this is a, a infographic. Okay. So this is an infographic on how do you need to register for MOOC. So um, previously, um, we asked you to um, prepare the template only, but for now, we're going to open up the link for you to develop your MOOC first, and then at the same time, review your materials that you're going to feature in a MOOC platform. So. Definitely, you will need to um, fill in a Google form so that we can give you a link to just uh, develop to give you a link to develop your MOOC in ITEL. Okay, so approximately six months of time to uh, finish up the uh, development of your MOOC, the MOOC course. Okay, after that, once you have already developed and fully developed your MOOC, uh, you will need to submit. Um, all the checklists and uh, everything, your materials to the to us, and then we will pass it to the selected reviewers that you have already selected. Okay, so we will give them a month to at least um, uh, review your platform and also your materials. Okay, once they've done uh, with the review, we will check because we will do this uh, in uh, Excel form. Okay, once they have done, we will check and then we will pass it back to the penyelaras. Each faculty have their own penyelaras, so definitely um, they will have to go through the checklist and then they will um, pass it back to the developer. Okay, so once the developer have already finished up um, 
doing or the amendments based on the recommendation or suggestions from the uh, reviewer, then only um, we will give you a letter that on the status of your MOOC, whether your MOOC is already published or there is something that has to change or additional features that you will need to add. Okay. All right, so then only your MOOC is available to be shared to for now. It's only for UMS students only. And then after that, um, once JTMK um, prepare our server and they are ready to go to public, then um, it is available to the public as well. Okay, so we are just going to get ready uh, for yeah, we are just going to get ready for now um, for our students only, but Bear in mind that we can anytime go to public because um, our server is ready, but it's just that uh, JTMK has some settings to do for the public, uh, just for the safety feature for our um, platform. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this one, let's go through the. The mock. Then, yeah. Okay, so we'll just start with this one. Okay, I'm not sure what happened to the other um, tab. Okay, so uh, this year, um, I'm going to start off with how do you need to create MOOC? What should be inside your MOOC? Okay, so um, definitely um, in MOOC, uh, we uh, encourage uh, our lecturers to have a landing page. This is what we call in Putra MOOC. Uh, they also call it as Laman Promosi. You need to promote your MOOC um, for the public, of course, then you will have to prepare all these. Course synopsis, a very brief course synopsis to introduce your um, course. Um, your learning outcome, you need to at least mention your learning outcome for the course. So the duration of your MOOC should be minimum four weeks. It can go up to 14, but no more than 14. Okay, the level, it, you need to let us know whether your course is for beginner or intermediate or advanced learners. Okay, so the fee definitely for our students, it's still free. Okay, but for the um, Upcoming when we are open to public, uh, we will need to decide how much do you need to charge for the course. And then you have to prepare an image of the course. Okay, you can get it. Um, the image, make sure the image is CC uh, that has CC license. Okay, and then you uh, follow the license provided. And then this is a sample of Laman Promosi in Putra Mok. So we are actually um, following whatever they have, but they are parking. Uh, they, they park their MOOC in open learning, okay? But for us, we are going to park it in our own server. So it's similar to ITEL, um, our own Smart V3 feature, which is upgraded to ITEL, okay? So it's similar, okay? So um, they are also using Moodle, okay? So you can have a look at the sample of Putra MOOC. You can just go in and I find it very friendly on that website. You can just go in and then... They have introduction of the video 
of their own course. So this video, it can be in a form of video. It's up to you. Okay. So uh, up to your creativity. So in the main page, uh, uh, main page is what um, they have on the first column of the um, ITEL, just like our Smart V3 on right on top of it. It's the main page. Okay, the first block is the main page. So definitely you will need to say some greetings and hello. For an example, I'm very excited to meet all of you. Okay, so all these uh, you need to have in that main page. So um, lectures information. Yeah, don't leave that one out. So tell us who are the teachers who are going to teach for that particular course. Okay, so um, you can also um, make that course in a team of two or three okay so definitely put out all the lectures information that is involved in developing the MOOC so teaching schedule if you have any um face-to-face -face, uh how do you say uh face-to-face -face, uh engagement with them okay so definitely you need to let us know these uh tell uh, tell your um learners that you're going to meet certain time okay if you have time then you can go online because i'm online okay so Give them the schedule. So introduction video, it can be in a form of a very brief um, 30 seconds to one minute video to introduce your course, just like what I told you in Laman Promosi. It can also be featured in that main page. So ice breaking session, it can be asynchronous and it can also be synchronous. It's up to you again. Okay, so if you have schedule in line, then you can have your ice breaking there. Okay, so um, ice breaking offline, you can do it in a form of Padlet, okay? So again, up to you. Um, and then topics or weeks, just like what I told you, um, it should have minimum four topics or four weeks. Some lecturers, they prefer to call their week uh, basis um, weekly. For example, week one, we're going to learn about this. Or some lecturers, they prefer to call it topic one, uh, we're going to talk about this. Okay, so it's up to you. So just make sure that there are four topics or four weeks minimum, okay? So don't go off more than um, 14 weeks or topics, okay? So learning outcomes must be emphasized in each week or the topic, okay? So that one, uh, course content, okay, course content. So throughout the four minimum four weeks, okay? So one week, you need to have your original video where you present your content where you present your um, the one of the topic, okay? So you have to have an original video from you to talk about the topic. So it can be in a form of video, three to four minutes, but not more than 10 minutes, okay? It cannot be 30 minutes, it cannot be one hour, no. So um, minimum one video for each of the topic a week. So at the end of the video, you must have information about who are the presenter and who is the developer. Okay, so you definitely, uh, maybe you might need your team help uh, to help you out with the developing the video. So yeah, some credits towards the end. Okay, so make sure there's no sensitive issues on politics, religions, and racist remarks. And um, just to give a suggestion, you can put in disclaimer alert, um, at least to be mentioned uh, along your um, MOOC course. Okay, it can be towards the end or it can be at the beginning of the block of your um, course content, okay? All right, so all works featured in MOOC should use Creative Commons license because um, definitely um, all works should have uh, some license to at least um, acknowledge our work, yeah? Okay, so that one, I will talk more about that one. All right, um, activity, okay. So one video, one activity, one assignment for one week. Okay, so at least four activities for one MOOC because we have a minimum of four weeks, definitely one activity for each of the week. So it can go more than two, more than three, okay, but not uh, cannot be more than five, I think, activity in one week, okay, because it's burdening. Okay, bear in mind, um, four weeks is equivalent to maybe eight hours. Okay, eight hours of learning time. Okay, so there should be at least a minimum of four activities in the overall MOOC and also four assignments for the overall MOOC. Just like what Dr. Kenneth has said last year, 
okay um you have to lessen your burden okay look for MOOC that uh, you can um no need to monitor at all time okay no need to actually mark so come up with a quiz that is um auto uh, marked okay it can be marked automatically okay so they can at least see their progress okay so come up with that particular assignment okay so that one and then here okay in the recent checklist okay we've updated you will need to have some extra reading because that will give you some score to at least to pass uh, the MOOC stage, okay, the checklist to pass the rubrics for the checklist. So extra reading, um, you should have at least maybe one. Okay, so this extra reading, it can be uh, in a form of link, but make sure you uh, attribute them. Okay, in a form of link, extra reading, it can be from any website or any YouTube that you can feature for your uh, that particular week. So reference and acknowledgement, definitely you need to um, do some referencing, okay? It can be in a weekly form or it can be towards the end of the uh, MOOC course, okay? So list down um, the references that you feature in your MOOC, okay? All right, before we go to Creative Commons, do you have any questions? Okay. All right. So I think let's go to. Okay. Okay. Low, so let's go to Creative Commons. Okay. This is the license that I'm talking about. So um, previously we had um, Dr. Kenneth explaining about uh, Creative Commons license, but I'm just going to make it short and brief so you can have more time on ITEL and PTG. So this, uh, the first symbol is. Uh, a man standing okay so this is um, attribution so this is what we are using in our smart p3 in our Dell. creative common uh, attribution compulsory this is compulsory you must always credit me so this one it refers to your material use my material but do not make money out of it okay so you non-commercial yeah you cannot make money out of my material okay you cannot sell it so non-derivative -der means you cannot change whatever materials that I have uh, put in, the materials that I have, information that I have put in, you cannot change. You cannot, uh, you can just copy and then you cannot change, okay? You can just copy and you cannot change and the, um, and still the uh, license still sticks with non-derivative, okay? So this one, share alike it's not sharing the materials alike you can adopt you can adapt but the license remain okay the license is still the same okay so if i allow you to change my material you need to repeat my license okay all right so here okay the most accommodating to restricted so here down below here, it's a very restricted license, okay? So these three, they are very free license, okay? CC, okay, public domain, okay? So this is CCBY, okay? You need to attribute the um, author, okay? So here, this, you can copy everything, okay? You can copy and make it as your own. You can change the information okay you can change the information and copy you can even sell my materials okay so all these are the license that you can use okay but this one here you can copy and you can change make changes okay but it's just that they don't allow you to sell the material okay all right, they don't allow you to sell the material. Okay, so still okay. But here, okay, no changes, no changes. So all these license down here, this tree, it cannot be featured in OER. This tree cannot be featured in OER. And also your MOOC, okay, cannot. Okay, so um, we only encourage this tree for now. 
top three here. We only encourage for you to put in MOOC and OER for these three licenses. Okay. All right. So because this is uh, not available to sell because we are scared that some programs may offer, uh, you know, money to be monetized. So um, definitely this is a bit restricted. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's it for now for my part. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, no questions. Okay, um, I think I can pass it to the next presenter. Um, thank you, um, Juan Eugenia. Uh, can everyone hear me from here? Good morning, everyone. Yes. Salam alaikum. Can hear you loud and clear? Yes. Thank you, Prof. Um, Assalamu alaikum and good morning uh, to, uh, to uh, Prof. Dr. Jualang, FSSA, and all the uh, Tim Bandekan and um, fellow colleagues from um, FSSA. So um, I would like to share my slide here. Uh, on the uh, ITEL, um, give me a few minutes if I could share from here. I hope I could. Uh, go on. Mm, okay. Right. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes. It is available now. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> because I, I, I could not see my own screen from here. <laughs> okay. So, um, um, uh, my part is uh, on the introduction to ITEL and its implementation. So um, from uh, all this while, uh, we've been using uh, Smart UMS uh, version, earlier version, version 2 and version 3. And now it's time for us to move on to another platform, uh, uh, what is called uh, as ITEL. So there, there will be no more uh, smart UMS. So starting from next semester, we are moving, uh, migrating to uh, ITEL. So uh, this ITEL is a totally different platform uh, and it's not something like what uh, smart to you to UMS uh, to smart version 3 UMS. So this is actually totally a different platform, meaning to say there will be uh, 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 when you need to uh, transfer uh, your information, your content from the smart UMS, you need to do it uh, not like what we have done before from smart UMS to, to smart UMS version 3. So you have to uh, back up your uh, data, your content in smart UMS version 3 before you transfer that, meaning to say you have to log in into ITEL in order for you to be able to transfer those uh, information and content into ITEL. But uh, don't worry about that one. We will, uh, come, out, we will come up with the uh, poster, the flowchart, how to do that uh, in uh, simple steps. Uh, Zoe is working on that one. So we will uh, uh, make sure that it will be uh, with you very, very soon. So uh, anyway, another thing that I would like to highlight here before I uh, move to the introduction uh, of ITEL and its implementation is that uh, we will have this uh, taught uh, trainer of trainer workshop on uh, the 22nd, if I'm not mistaken, on 21st, sorry, on the 21st, whereby there are five representatives from um, FSSA will uh, take part. 
And uh, the reason why we require five participations, five representatives from uh, FSSA is for us to train these five um, champions uh, so that they can come back to the faculty and have their own group of mentees. So these five uh, mentors were uh, were uh, cater the needs and 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 help their groups, their mentee groups, uh, to uh, achieve at uh, the level uh, that uh, the quality level that is required in our uh, teaching and learning practices here in UMS. All right, um, let me uh, start with my uh, Intel introduction. Um, basically, um, what we've been uh, doing all this while in uh, ITEL, sorry, in, in, in Smart UMS is 1732. Uh, that is one thing that we have to, 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 to do, that we have to comply. Uh, but once we move to ITEL, uh, there will be no 1732 anymore, but it is converted into 40, 40, 20. Uh, don't worry much about this 1732 and 40, 40, 20, uh, because uh, we are trying uh, to make everyone life simpler. Uh, meaning to say, at the same time, I hope that uh, none of us will make things complicated for, for, for this because things are so simple when we are implementing 40, 40, 20. Uh, but when the time comes of implementing 40, 40, 20, there probably be certain courses that uh, could not comply with 40, 40, 20. So therefore, you are still going with uh, 1732. Uh, so that will be explained more during the TOT uh, later. Um, <clears throat> so um, what in uh, ITEL is, there are three most important components in ITEL. Uh, ITEL consists of uh, digital content, uh, TNL, teaching and learning activities, and e-assessment. So these are the most important uh, aspect or domain that we have to stress on uh, that uh, PEP is suggesting and if I may say um, uh, impose on uh, everyone that we need to pay more attention on digital con our digital content. We need to pay more uh, attentions to our teaching and learning activities and of course we have also uh, pay more attention on our e-assessment and all these things of course it has to be uh, CLO based and there are other elements like interactive um, how to uh, engage to the uh, full participation and all those things and in order for us to arrive at that so I would suggest more interactive activities more interactive digital content or perhaps a very interesting uh, e-assessment one is come to e-assessment in ITEL I didn't mean here uh, e-assessment uh, on the summative aspect it could be formative as well meaning to say uh, it's not necessary uh, to be uh, all the e-assessment in ITEL has to be uh, uh, great, with, come with great. It, it can be just a, a formative um, uh, approach that you can use uh, as your uh, e-assessment. <clears throat> uh, next is, uh, this is what uh, matter most, I suppose, uh, in, uh, but this will be explained uh, more detail by uh, Puan Sami after this. So uh, what is here is that uh, what you can see here is the PTG uh, for the three credit hour courses. I'm assume that there are may probably be probably two credit hours or four credit hours uh, at FSSA, but uh, most of our courses are three credit hours. So our base my uh, discussion here, my explanation here on the three credit hours. So let's say we are using 30% of credit hours, 30% PTG for the credit hours. So meaning the hours uh, here is based on the SLT. Eh? We are taking 36 hours uh, SLT uh, for uh, PTG, uh, 
PTG is a pembelajaran teladun gantian ya yeah? substitute so this is a little bit different concept than what we've been using in our uh, smart UMS before this before the PTG uh, is implementing so the implementation of PTG uh, is not uh, don't worry so much about this one it's not uh, uh, um, we will we will uh, probably uh, start with this uh, next in the coming next coming semesters but um, to let everybody knows in advance that uh, PTG involves 30%, 40%, or 50%, or up to 79%, which will be, uh, um, I'm sure that Dr. Damisa uh, are aware about this one, are well aware about this one, and uh, up to 79%, which has been uh, approved by the Senate in December. So uh, for this part, uh, let's say 30% is compulsory, so uh, based on 30 percent here uh, there are 36 uh, hours slt uh, equal to 36 hours of students sr slt and in order for us to comply with the 30 percent ptg uh, we need to have 14 hours of learning materials 14 hours of learning activity and eight hours of the assessments uh, so this is the, that might sound a little bit big but uh, the implementation is much uh, simpler and easier uh, for everyone. And that means four weeks uh, without any face-to-face. -face. Uh, the reason why that we are going to, to, to have the PTG, this is what has been suggested uh, by the Kementerian uh, Pendidikan Tinggi. And we have to comply with it. In fact, we are uh, the last few universities in Malaysia who are trying to impose PTG in our university. So uh, let's look at what 30% PTG is all about. So as I have mentioned earlier, they are consist of three important domains, digital content, TNL uh, activities, and e-assessment. So 40% of digital contents is equal to 14 hours, roughly um, plus a month, there are like points there. So it can be, uh, you can use one videos, uh, one uh, or one another one is lecture notes, infographic, short articles or journal articles. Uh, so for video, if we are using video in our uh, ITEL, please make sure that our video is not more than and uh, that means 10 minutes because 10 minutes is equal to one hour. So normally 10 minutes video is too long. Even even sometimes we are uh, when we are watching ten minutes video, we tend to uh, fast forward to know what is next and what is next. So um, if we are uh, giving a ten minutes video, so there could be some uh, information that will be missed by our student. So the best could be like two to three minutes video. So it doesn't mean that only one video. You can have like two videos, uh, like six minutes equal to almost one hour. Uh, as long as it's not more than 10 minutes and plus one uh, our lecture notes and when we put in our lecture note it is um, advisable to have it in a very interactive way um, where it's, it is more um, uh, interesting and a bit fun for the student it's not just like what we have been practiced all this while in smart ums we just convert that into pdf and then uh, dump it in our uh, <laughs> I use the word dumb here, so sorry for that language, but uh, this is what we found. Uh, Smart UMS are becoming like a, a dumping ground where most of the lectures, some of the lectures, not all, uh, just dump everything inside there, all their notes without uh, even uh, even uh, uh, um, uh, realize it or uh, that a uh, student might not read all those notes or all those uh, general articles and it is sometimes when we are um, uh, upload a general article sometimes we forgot that uh, the these students some of our students don't even know how to interpret the 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 data the tables all those numbers and everything they don't even know how to read that so um, it's, it's sort of like we try to put in something but but the output might be lesser than what we expected. So uh, another best way to do that is through uh, we convert that into infographic and maybe we just summarize uh, uh, 
the important point and that where the what I mean by the short article just now. Right. Uh, as in the uh, TN, TNL activities, there is another 40% of TNL for four, eh? not for one, uh, for 40%, 14, 14 hours is equal to four PTG. Uh, you can have any uh, gamifications or uh, maybe forum or chat using other resources or other social media platforms like uh, WhatsApp, Telegram or whatever other things that you think is relevant to your course because this is about your course okay so you know your course more than anyone else and 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 uh, none of us other than you can say that oh, you, you you've done something not is correct uh, or, or who are we to question you, you know? So you know your your course, you are the best person who knows your course, you are the master of your course. So the most important thing is we we, we are trying to uh, um, suggest the, uh, uh, the principles of how to make it more interesting for the student. Uh, this is based on what I have found that most of the students uh, in my survey, uh, they are, uh, sort of complaining or not complaining but uh, rate it uh, less low uh, for the participation because it is not interesting at all uh, the smart ems is not interesting at all the lms page is not interesting at all there are too many things to read they do not know which one to read they are uh, it's, it's boring it's too bland uh, no colors no nothing it's just uh, wordy you know uh, so we are trying Based on that one, that is why we came up with the idea that um, to increase their participation, we need to turn our uh, content into more interactive, more uh, interesting and fun uh, digital content, uh, TL, uh, TNL activities and also e-assessment. So as I have uh, mentioned earlier, e-assessment is equal to 20%, that is about 8 hours, uh, it could be in formative form or uh, uh, summative form based on how your your course is 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 designed yeah so it can be a topical quiz every topic come like three questions yes or no questions uh, and or maybe assignment and maybe workshop so these are the things that will be uh, audited as e assessment you can find all these uh, in the uh, uh, in the I tell it's almost the same thing. Don't worry about I tell because what I tell is if you know very well, if you work very well on your smart EMS with all those resources and icon, it's all it's the similar things that you will find in I tell. I will try to show you if I have time later uh, how they are look like in in I tell, right. So this strategy is when we are implementing the PTG, 30% PTG, this is what we are suggesting. There are four PTG uh, uh, under 30%, uh, PTG 1, 2, 3, and 4. So four PTG, each of these PTG, of course, it has to come out with uh, three, those three uh, those elements, uh, learning material, learning activity, and e-assessment. All you have to do here is just to create one learning material, one learning activity, and one e-assessment minimum. But you can go more than one. Uh, so by calculation, it's about three and a half hours each of this to uh, cater to the 30 percent. And we need to come up with four PTG. So uh, when we are implementing PT 30 percent PTG for the whole uh, uh, un universe, I mean um, faculties, um, you can choose which week or which topic that you want to implement PTG. Okay, this 30%, you can choose from uh, 14 weeks that we have, 14 study weeks that we have in, academic, in our academic calendar to plan very well which topic or which week that you want to implement the PTG. For example, you can plan it, let's like, say, like, say, before the Raya, the Raya holiday, and after the Raya holiday. So, meaning to say you have that two PTG already for that that uh, to that topic that involves during those three weeks and maybe one week that you plan to go away for your conference to attend a conference you can plan that one because we know when 
I mean, we 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 know beforehand the date, uh, the the conference that we like to attend, and maybe one more uh, PTG uh, during the school holiday that you like to go away for, uh, with your uh, family for for a holiday. So meaning to say, it's just not fixed, or it should not, or or it, it doesn't mean that it has to be continuously week one, week two, week three, and week four. It can be any week in those uh during those 14 academic week of academic calendar right another thing is that we have to uh, understand here when we are choosing all these weeks it it has to be in our table four and um that uh that table four need to be endorsed in the program as usual practice right so uh, that is why i said we need to plan it very well so don't worry so much it will be time when we implement the 30% PTG that need to be, uh, that, that is how it has to be catered. Right. Um, this is what I meant uh, earlier when we are using, for example, this one, when we choose uh, the uh, learning, sorry, when we are using uh, learning material, learning activity and e-assessment. So what we are uh, to have, uh, uh, must be aware of is the use of correct uh, resource here. Similar like what you have, like what we have earlier in our smart UMS. But what makes this more interesting and easier, it came in uh, color coded. Yeah? So uh, although there are a few of these uh, color coded elements here are in different uh, domain but we will try to um, uh, manage this with uh, JTMK. Uh, for example here all the blues here all the blue icon here uh, is for you to choose uh, as your learning material so any of the blues here while the green and the orange is here uh, is this is of yeah uh, the the greens and the orange are for the teaching and learning activities and the pink there are three pink here uh, meant for the e-assessment so there you have it here so you don't have to be like worry so much uh, using the the, the wrong uh, icon for because it will not be audited uh, as uh, what is supposed to be audited in learning uh, activities, uh, I mean, uh, content activities and e assessment because they are all in color coded here. Okay, so if you are um, log into ITEL, uh, when you click on the activities and resources here, you will see uh, uh, there are a few of these blue in a different uh, uh, sections. So we try to sort that things if. If, if possible so um the same like what um prof uh, said just now um we are actually encouraging uh, the pedagogical will by uh, alan carrington here uh, because this will make our life much easier and uh, although here is uh, ipad apps but uh, you can still use the, the, this uh, these uh, apps yeah for example uh, in uh, 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 applying okay so these are the uh, action words that can be used like implement uh, share carry out and these are the activities can be uh, done so that uh, uh, we are not uh, making mistake in in writing our our objective and and all those things and we know that from here in uh, uh, apply these are the uh, apps uh, that can be choose from for the activities, maybe for the content, and uh, maybe for the assessment as well. So these are uh, the uh, a good uh, resource for us to look into. But uh, there are more than this actually, yeah. And some of these uh, platforms or apps, uh, of course, uh, we need to pay. And and uh, at the moment, uh, JTMK are not purchasing all these apps uh, and um, but don't worry so much because uh, most of these apps they have this like trial so make use of that and they are also things like uh, generally i'm using generally here uh, fully generally in my presentation even in my classes 
uh, in my lectures uh, exactly what you are um, watching right now. Uh, so this is this the, the exact way they are using in my class. Uh, using generally, and my student is also uh, they are also in in the generally at the same time. <laughs> So uh, uh, I think that is all uh, uh, from from me uh, on 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 uh, I tell. So um, I would like to to read this what uh, what this quotes is. Uh, we keep moving forward, opening new doors, and doing new things because we are curious, and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. So this is why we are doing all these things, and apart from that. We are. We need to move forward, and we have to remember that our students they were born in the digital era. So, uh, if we are using the same method like what we learn during our time from our lecturers in the university, so it could be something like boring, and we are like cloning what has been 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 going been done by our lecturers and impose that to our students who are born in a totally different era than than us. So uh, we have to keep on moving forward and uh, opening new doors and doing new things because we are curious and curiosity keep us leading uh, down to the new path. So with that, if you have any questions, uh, I will maybe we can discuss that. Anyone, any questions before I pass uh, the session to uh, Puan Salmi? Hi, morning, Chairman. Ah, uh, yeah, good morning, Dr. Damisa. Yeah, uh, mungkin sebelum itu saya mengalu-alukan dahulu lah uh, tim daripada uh, pusat e pembelajaran. Uh, selamat okay. datang ke pusat uh, e pembelajaran yang diketuai oleh uh, pengarah sendiri, Prof. Uh, Sun Fok. And for all uh, pencerama, uh, tadi kita ada Puan Eugenia uh, Edward, penyelaras MOOC dan OER bahkan. Ya, yeah, yeah. uh, Encik Amiduddin uh, Ibrahim, uh, penyelaras uh, BL dan latihan. Dan yeah. juga mungkin kita ada uh, Puan uh, Salmi uh, Jemun, timbalan pengarah Betul. Uh, pagi ini. Kan? Uh, so selamat datang, terima kasihlah uh, atas uh, kehadiran. Uh, tim uh, PIP. So mungkin uh, soalan saya kepada uh, Cik Amin lah kan? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Uh, so tadi uh, I tell uh, because I understand uh, I, uh, the PTG is uh, gantian kepada PTS bahkan ada 1732 and for the PTG actually kita ukur 40-40-20 uh, for three credit hours, 40% uh, equal to 14 hours uh, material and yeah. 14 hours uh, activities and yeah. 8 hours assessment. Betul. Kan? 14, 14, Betul. Uh, 8 kan? 14, yeah. 14, 8. 14, 14, 8. Uh, yeah, so actually I have go through uh, ITEL. Saya ada pergi uh, tengok ITEL and it's actually similar to Smart V3 juga lah. Ya. Yeah. Uh, tapi soalan saya, tapi sebenarnya tadi sudah di ada macam tidak silap saya dalam slide tadi ada cadangan thirty uh, percent itu yang PTG one, PTG two, PTG three, PTG four. But that yeah. one uh, mungkin kalau mana mungkin boleh di tengok. Ah, yang ini. Iya. Yeah. So ini cadangan. Uh, Ini adakah cadangan ini merujuk kepada we can achieve the PTG 30% yang 14, uh, 14 uh, 8 hours itu we just upload one material, one activity, one assessment. Yeah, uh, basically we try to make things easier for everyone lah kan. So this is the best punya uh, cadangan daripada kami, daripada PEP. Uh, satu, 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 satu lah tetapi boleh tambah lah kan sebab uh, kalau kita mau, mau mengira baik the hours itu macam satu learning material itu dah jadi macam ikut 3.3 hours kan Ya kalau macam tadi sepatutnya uh. Uh, kalau uh, 14 hours uh, kita kena ada dalam uh, satu 10 minit video sama juga dengan satu jam kan Ya, ya 
kan uh, 10 menit video sama juga dengan satu uh, jam so tidak ikut yang itu sudahlah ikut bahan pula ikut bahan uh, yang aku sekarang ya yeah, uh, actually actually kalau kalau kita mau based on Uh, PTG itu uh, apa uh, uh, hours itu 14 jam itu dibahagi dengan empat inilah kan kita bahagikan hmm. dia kepada empat jadi satu satu uh, apa satu uh, elemen dalam uh, learning itu uh, sepatutnya equal to tiga jam setengah dan satu elemen di dalam dalam uh, aktiviti itu tiga jam setengah lagi dan satu e assessment itu Uh, bersamaan dengan 2 jam kan 2, 4, 6, 8 ya 8, 3 setengah, 3 setengah, 3 setengah, ya yes, 14 so uh, jadi uh, uh, yang ini terserah kepada uh, pencara punya uh, apa kreativiti ataupun uh, uh, macam mana mereka hendak uh, jadikan uh, ianya uh, 3 jam setengah maksimum ataupun uh, just a little bit uh, lesser than that sebab tu tadi yang earlier uh, sekejapnya saya tunjuk yang ni balik uh, yang ini uh, mana tu ya ah, okey yang ini cadangan-cadangan dia macam video lecture note infographic so kita assume kalau dia membuat melihat membaca lecture notes pun dah mungkin dah kita, uh, one hour Contohnya kan sebab dia kena go back nak fahamkan dia balik so dengan one video and one lecture hours equal to three and a half hours lah kita assuming that way lah. So uh, tetapi apa yang kami cadangkan dekat sini adalah uh, sebagai uh, minimum saja doktor. <laughs> yang paling minimum saja untuk memudahkan uh, uh, apa uh, aplikasi uh, PTG nanti. Ah, 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 ah. Makasih Encik Amin. Cuba mungkin boleh uh, pergi tengok uh, yang uh, slide yang tadi Encik Amin tunjuk. Yang tadi ni kan. Okey yang ini. Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Mm -mm, yang ini. Ya. Yeah. Uh, actually uh, untuk ITEL uh, kami belum lagi buat uh, pemakluman yang uh, secara khusus kepada pensyarah FSSA lah sebab sebenarnya hmm. saya menunggu uh, cara pengukuran uh, 14 jam itu sebenarnya hmm. sebab kita belum menerima lagi panduan uh, pengukuran uh, apa ni 14-14-8 uh, itu daripada PEP lah so sebab yeah. itu uh, di peringkat FSSA sebenarnya belum ada pemakluman khusus kepada pensyarah because hmm. we don't know yet macam mana dia diukur so we don't know what yeah. to tell uh, the lecturer hmm. lah so Betul. actually I assume 14 hours uh, untuk uh, PTG ini pengukuran dia adalah berdasarkan uh, SLT but then I think uh, berdasarkan cadangan daripada PEP itu so back to macam PTS juga bilangan dokumen yang diupload kan. Hmm. So kalau dalam hmm. PTS kita ada 1732. So kalau dalam hmm. uh, PTG ni uh, kalau saya tengok tadi 7 itu sudah bertukar jadi 4, 3 itu menjadi 4, 2 itu menjadi 4. So uh, hmm. instead of 1732 for PTG now you just uh, we can just assume can be achieved by 444 uh, inilah. 2 uh, 40 40 20% yeah, by percentage kan. Ya, yeah, but now you didn't uh, ukur pakai percentage. Sudah kan? Pakai bilangan mm -hmm. sudah kan? You did because uh, you didn't use SLT. Yeah, you just yeah, assume, yeah. Uh, you just assume uh, uh, satu video, uh, you just assume yang 3.5 hours lah satu bahan mm -hmm. begitu, 3.5 hours kan? So it's actually mm -hmm. macam back to PTS juga lah jadinya kan? Ya, yeah, lebih kurang dia actually lebih kurang sama juga. We try to to accommodate tidak mau nanti semua semua apa syarat jadi macam uh, apa kelangkabut atau <laughs> something yang yang totally alien kan. So kita cuba nak accommodate uh, uh, keadaan keadaan uh, kebiasaan kita yang menggunakan 1732 selama ini dengan uh, 40 40 20 ini. Tetapi pada misa ada uh, pada misa nanti uh, kita pun uh, akan keluarkan juga lah uh, PTG ni uh, um, makluman lah uh, tentang peng, uh, aplikasi PTG dan juga dalam uh, table 4 ni uh, pada semester yang next coming semester itulah maksudnya dalam semester yang akan datang ini kita just uh, play around dengan um, masih terpaksa menggunakan ITEL sebab uh, uh, Smart EMS itu uh, tidak lagi di maintain uh, kita memang kena migrate lah so uh, 
dalam semester depan ini mm, mungkin kita masih meng, menggunakan uh, 1732 dahulu untuk membiasakan kita dengan sistem dalam dalam ITEL dan juga sebelum kita migrate sepenuhnya uh, kepada uh, penggunaan 40, 40, 20 nanti. Okay, uh, Dr. Ali dan Encik Amin, ya lagi pun uh, yeah. saya baru dapat surat uh, training untuk uh, ini adalah pada 21 kan so i think yeah, it's uh, impossible impossible for us to implement uh, dalam masa terdekat lah because the training yeah, yeah. Belum, belum lagi kan ya yeah, ya yeah, belum sebab uh, kami uh, cuba uh, sebenarnya macam seolah-olah kami ni dah uh, apa PP PP ni macam terlambat mem- memaklumkan kepada semua uh, apa uh, FPIA kan tetapi uh, now actually uh, kita uh, ahead of time memandangkan uh, kelulusan daripada senat tu bulan 12 jadi ada penambahbaikan dan sebagainya kan so we are trying our very best lah to cater masalah ni sebabnya benda ni melibatkan semua bukan sahaja pensyarah tetapi juga pelajar-pelajar kita kan so uh, kita tak mau nanti ada yang uh, uh, pensyarah yang uh, confused uh, pelajar yang confused kan so kita try uh, our very best untuk uh, memudah carakan kepada semua sekali semua pihak lah yang terlibat begitu Okay, Cik Amin tu saja dari saya. Thank you. Terima kasih banyak-banyak, Dr. Assalamualaikum. Ada tolong ni. Ya, uh, ya, Prof. Jual Lang. Silakan, ya. Prof. Ya, bila hari itu kita diberikan maklumat untuk kertas dasar ke Senet lah. Salah satu yang di-emphasize itu adalah ini arahan daripada Kementerian. Itu ya. yang pertama lah. Dan pada ketika itu memang saya ada sedikit um, persoalan dengan propong Uh, berkaitan dengan apa mekanisme kita untuk melaksanakan uh, apa tu uh, PTG inilah hmm. dan ya saya pun paham macam pada ketika itu tidak jelas hmm. <laughs> kaedah kita jadi yeah. saya fikir sekarang ni pun semua orang pun masih belum jelas juga dan saya kami alalukan lah daripada peringkat fakulti kita alalukan juga uh, apa tu detail uh, training itulah sebab hmm. macam tadi itu video 10 minit itu equivalence dengan sekian-sekian jam itu yeah. uh, Itu juga saya rasa penting untuk kita setarakan Dia ada satu equivalence of SLT uh, hmm. Kalau lecture note berapa equivalence to yeah. hours Sebab hmm. apa yang saya paham hari itu Seolah macam it's 100% kita akan move Maksudnya setiap satu kursus yang ada ditawarkan dalam satu-satu program itu They must be comply to 40, 40 and 20. Jadi um, kita mengikut dalam kepala saya lah pada ketika itu argument saya dengan profong itu adalah macam mana kita nak blendedkan untuk setengah kursus di di dalam fakulti yang mungkin tidak boleh fall under 40, 40, 20. 20. Uh, contoh hmm. macam data industri, project FYP, yes. uh, yes. tentang amali, ya macam kita punya puli amali memang uh, kerja di makmal dan diperlukan hands on jadi kita hmm. perlukan the detail uh, macam mana arrangement uh, hmm. apa PTG ini untuk mau boleh memenuhi 40 40 jadi dia akan menjadi kepada sebenarnya peralihan, peralihan ini akan mengubah kita punya landscape kaedah delivery PDP kita jadi kalau kita hmm. tidak paham Uh, dan tidak dapat menghayati dengan baik, kita susah nak buat arrangement. Uh, uh, realignment kepada kaedah PDP kita itu. Jadi saya rasa um, um, kita memerlukan penghayatan yang jelas, uh, the detail of the how do you carry out the apa tu, assessment itu. Maksudnya um, hmm. dia punya format perlaksanaan uh, PTG ini dengan jelas supaya kita boleh selarikan dengan kita punya landscape uh, kursus kita lah jadi mungkin landscape kita tidak sama dengan macam psikologi dengan pendidikan mm-hmm. ya. uh, jadi mm-hmm. mungkin kita kena kena lihat um, pada landscape yang luas supaya penggunaan 40 40 itu 20 itu akan menyeluruh kepada semua yeah. fakulti itu antara yang jadi isu hari itulah jadi begitu Betul. juga dengan fakulti pertanian di mana kerja-kerja ladang hmm. um, 
di mana komponen um, digital itu, di mana komponen uh, e-assessment itu dan sebagainya lah. Jadi kita kita masih blur, masih tidak jelas bahagian hmm. yang ini. Jadi kalau ada um, yang lebih detail daripada yang ini, mungkin ada baiknya supaya kita dapat hmm. larikan balik. Sebab so, sekarang okay. ini su sudah ada gambaran sedikit lah, tetapi kita masih belum jelas. Uh, macam tadi itulah video equivalence dengan one hours, legend hmm. sketch equivalence berapa hours dan sebagainya itu. Hmm. So itu lebih mudah kalau kita ada yang lebih konstruktif. Uh, dia punya dia punya alignment itu <laughs> untuk kita Betul. dapat yang empat puluh empat puluh dua puluh itu. Dan uh, ya. ya. Dan uh, ya, so. tadi lah saya tengok so. macam mana PPP kita punya way of thinking dari segi PDP punya delivery ni lah. Adakah kita pergi kepada the simplest way so that the student will understand, uh, which is more likely kita spoon feed pelajar sekarang ni lah. Um, dia tengok sikit, dia tak perlu buat kerja keras and then dia faham. And then I think our generation has been go through with the hardest part. Which mm -hmm. dia, pensyara kita kan dulu kan dia conteng di dinding saja. And then they expect you that you go to the library and you check the material. Yes. And this is hmm. how we survive with that process. And nowadays, kita expect everything is easy. And then people just tekan-tekan dia tak perlu buat kerja keras. Dan dia tidak gunakan otak dia dengan baik. Mm -hmm. And then, are we going to this part? Ataupun we will go to the hardest part so that student will use their brain, interpret things. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Macam mana konsep kita sekarang ini dari segi dari segi PDP kita? Itu itu saya lebih tak pandangan uh, Tuan Amin lah. Mm. Ya, yeah. terima kasih uh, Prof Yolang. Uh, soalan yang sangat uh, uh, sebenarnya uh, uh, bagus untuk kita explore bersama ini, Prof Yolang. Eh? Prof Yolang eh? uh, satunya tadi tentang uh, format uh, pelaksanaan itu. Uh, kami di PEP memang aware memang ada khusus-khusus yang uh, mungkin uh, tidak tidak dapat comply dengan 40, 40, 20 itu. Uh, satu contoh macam ada satu juga khusus di psikologi, uh, di di counselling uh, yang memerlukan memang 14 week uh, lab face to face uh, proses itu. So memang uh, dia tidak boleh be uh, maksudnya 4 minggu away daripada uh, face to face tu memang agak impossible untuk dilaksanakan oleh khusus tersebut. Uh, untuk khusus-khusus begitu uh, yang awal tadi saya ada gunakan perkataan exceptional tu kan. So hmm. mungkin khusus-khusus yang begitu tu uh, kita uh, exceptionalkan dia daripada mengikuti satu tu, uh, 40 40 20 ini. Tetapi hmm. itu kita kena kena pastilah khusus yang bagi khusus apa kan. Ini menyusui kedekanan lah punya. Kita terima saja di PEP ini kan sebab kita tidak tahu khusus-khusus di setiap fakulti kan. Uh, uh -huh. Dan uh, mungkin uh, itu uh, uh, kita ada juga bincangkan di, di PEP uh, kita mungkin akan stick dengan yang 1732 kepada khusus yang berkenaan. Uh, okay. Sebab blended learning tu kita tidak boleh run away dah daripada blended learning ni kan Prof kan? Mm -hmm. Sebab uh, memang itu sebahagian daripada KPI University 30% blended learning ini. Uh, jadi untuk yang uh, alignment dengan khusus-khusus uh, yang lain itu bagaimana format ini dapat dilaksanakan saya uh, saya fikir mungkin nanti kami akan melihat dengan lebih uh, mendalam lagi uh, pelaksanaannya uh, memandangkan memang uh, Uh, PTG ni tidak akan di uh, uh, apa uh, implement sepenuhnya lah pada semester yang dalam empat minggu akan datang ni kan terlambat untuk masa yeah. kita ya Prof kan? yeah, yeah. <laughs> jadi uh, kami ni uh, roadshow ni untuk mendedahkan awareness kepada semua lah tentang kewujudan uh, ITEL, kewujudan PTG supaya nanti bila kita start implement tidak semua terkejut kan <laughs> nanti susah kita ya bro <laughs> nak menjawab itu mm -hmm. okay. uh, jadi uh, yang untuk yang berikutnya itu Prof uh, uh, pihak uh, PEP akan uh, berusaha lah uh, akan cuba memastikan yang terbaik untuk semua dengan uh, sebab kami pun setiap minggu pun dua tiga kali akan berbincang, berjumpa dan berbincang bagaimana untuk menambah baik lagi mm -hmm. uh, dan juga uh, yang pentingnya itu adalah pelaksanaan format dan juga construction alignment itulah yang, yang sangat penting sekali yang kami uh, pandang uh, mungkin nanti selepas ini uh, 
Puan Salmi akan uh, jelaskan dengan lebih detail lagi tentang uh, pelaksanaan PTG itu dan bagaimana ianya bermula dan <laughs> bagaimana wujudnya lahirnya PTG ini kan dan ya. uh, dengan lebih uh, jelas lagi lah Prof. Okay. Terima kasih banyak Prof. Okay. Dengan, okay. Uh, terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Memang, ya. memang, memang sangat sangat benarnya untuk untuk kami 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 um, bincangkan selepas ini feedback tu memang sangat 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 berguna. Saya pun uh, tadi pun uh, Gus Bam juga dari dapat soalan macam gitu kan. Eh ini bagus soalan ini. Terima kasih, terima kasih. Okay, I just say, uh, uh, just uh, give me one minute, yeah. Yes. Uh, Prof. Jolang, yeah, terima kasih uh, atas semua komen-komen tadi. And also, Dr. Damisa, thank you for all the comment. And all are noted down because we're getting all the feedback. And uh, memang, we will only implement fully when 100% of our academic staff are all ready. Okay, so nanti uh, Persami will give all the penjelasan which I believe will answer all the comments and questions from uh, Prof. Cholang and also Dr. Dambisa. And we will have a very important announcement at the end of today. Okay, Persami, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Encik Amin. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Yolang and uh, uh, semua uh, daripada FSSA. Uh, next, I pass the floor to Puan Salmi. Silakan Puan Salmi. Okay. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to all. Um, macam nama saya disebut-sebut lebih awal sebelum saya membentang. Bikin nervous ni. So, um, before I begin, I hope that uh, my, my, my voice is clear, right? I want to share this first. Yes, you you love and clear. Okay, thank you, Prof. To share my slide first. Share my computer order. Show me in front of the presentation. Oh. Okay, ass Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to all of you. Uh, before I answer, before I begin my presentation, I would like to answer, I think Dr. Junaidi asked a question on siapa yang akan kira tentang kriteria pencapaian dalam ITEL. Actually, the system, dia akan cater macam smartri juga based on the criteria. So, for the time being, as mentioned by Dr. Uh, J. Amin just now, kita masih kira in terms of the criteria 1732. So, um, untuk Dr. Junaidi, I, I hope it's clear. And then um, the second one is um, like what saya suka Dr. Dr. Jualang punya comment just now because that is the very that that is the reason that we go for engagement in every faculty because actually we are suggested that we put in a caveat there that provide um, flexibility in the delivery of the courses because. There are courses that we cannot simply say it should be done in the 40-40 format. Uh, for example, um, there's a course like Dr. Jualang said just now, Prof. Jualang said just now, in pertanian, how can make it digitalized bila kita, we have to learn it face-to-face. -face. And as well as the sulam subject, because the TOR for sulam is the face-to-face -face should be more than 70 percent. So it, it, if it based on that um, um, restriction, um, we should be flexible enough to provide um, the choice uh, for the lecturer to make sure that if you are not achieving the PTG, at least you can still achieve the 1732. So now actually it's not like last time um, we were doing PTS. It's either you lose or gagal. It's not, not that anymore. If you cannot achieve the PTG, then your courses will be classified as 1732. Okay. So 
dia pilihan dia begitu sebab um, laporan kita ke kementerian adalah kita akan laporkan berapa kursus yang mencapai PTG, berapa berapa kursus yang PTS. That's all. So who decide? First, the lecturer is himself or herself. Sebab dia tahu, you are the master of your subject. You know whether this one can can achieve or not. And then the faculty will uh, uh, mengesahkan dalam JKPM. Memang ini sesuai. But sometimes ada pencara dia suka buat sampai 50%. But the faculty knows subjek itu tidak boleh more than 30%. So we give all the prerogative to the faculty to make sure sama ada the, the, the subjek itu PTG ataupun PTS. So um, so with that, saya, saya mulalah saya punya slide because slide saya ni simple sahaja. Okay. Um, what is SBL atau we call it PTG in UMS? It... Okay. The agenda of my presentation is I will will uh, share with you the blended learning status and the changes in the IPTA currently. Um, actually, the two entry is simple because I will show you a um, real life example of how we um, develop our table four based on PTG formula. Okay. Okay. And PEP actually we doesn't um, we are del delivering what is have been stated in the in the cap in the cap kementerian, but there's a guideline for it under playbook pengajaran dan pembelajaran dalam talian. It's a 130 pages of references, but spe specifically for PTG, it is in chapter 1.5. If you want to read only on PTG, it is in chapter 1.5. And the other one is the garis panduan pelaksanaan. You can read it and then actually you can download it from um, for our website or you can just Google it online. Um, this is the chronology because um, Changes is the only constant things in life. So actually, since 2014, we have been in the capital level, in the, in the national level, we have been um, discussing about what is the best way to include online learning in the university level. So since 2014, there is, but in 2018, 2018 there's a bengkel pemantapan pelaksanaan pembelajaran teradun in which um, there's a separation between pembelajaran teradun sokongan and pembelajaran teradun gantian. So what is pembelajaran teradun sokongan? It is the 1732. So all this while, for this past five years, actually in UMS, we are doing the pembelajaran teradun sokongan already, the 1732. And Alhamdulillah, as was mentioned, as shared by Prof. Fong just now, in UMS, the awareness of blended learning is nearly 97%. And I think in um, in FSSA, you already achieved the 100% of awareness. So if we already achieved the 100% of awareness, what's next? Because PTS is actually, we just count the quantity of material that we upload. But in PTG, the, the, we actually, we are more on the quality of our teaching and learning online. That's why they, they try to put um, the criteria that um, when there's a lecture online, there should be a student engage, engage, engagement regarding the topic. And then there's a, a formative um, questions asking about the material. So that if you replace the class, you know that the student already actually read our material based on the engagement that we do. Let's say um, you provide um, materials to read, let's say. Um, dalam the ITEL, there's a forum there and you can read the forum anytime. And then just to make sure that actually they really understand it, maybe other quiz in Kahoot or everything, letak dalam quiz. So we know that actually the student actually have read the, the material. But I think the, the challenges the challenges will be um, adakah sama bila kita buat physical. Because if physical, we know. We, from the reaction from our student, we know. But this is the best to some to this extent i think this is the best way that we can we know that our student read the material they engage in the material and then there's a quiz on it we asking about short so, uh, about the material that we didn't give lecture uh, face to face 
So in 2018, actually, we were meant to ask, are we ready for PTG? But in 2018, um, we just started the 1732 mantra. So I said to the, uh, um, the IPTS, IPTA during that time, I said that, um, give us time. Give us time to create awareness on online learning in UMS based on the new formula. So after five years, now we are, because based on our data, we, it shows that 97% of our staff is already aware of online learning. To make it a better, we make, we make it a quality one, we proceed, kita berhijrah, we migrate to the PTG formula, which is actually, um, it doesn't change the way we teach. We still teach as usual. There's still an exam all because the PTG is only required for 30% of your um, SLT. So how do you make it 30% in your SLT? I will show you based on um, a live table for that I have. Um, next, um, this is the formula. We, we are in the 1732, the PTS. Actually, there's another new formula um, in 2000. I think it's 2019 or 20. 540, 35, 20, but we skip that. And now we are going for 40, 40, 20. So why we are going for blended learning? Because if we are go going for 1732, like last, like last time, um, it should, the, the lecture should be, should be physical in person. And if you cannot attend your lecture, you have to replace it. For 1732, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the senior, maybe Prof. Jualang know. Is there any guidelines in UMS level which stated that you can substitute your class? Because I've asked around, I asked PPK, I've, and to my, I think to my knowledge, I didn't find any written guidelines saying that you can replace your class. So that and um. Because we are missing that important things. Because bila MQA datang, they will ask it mana dia punya punca kuasa. So when we do the PTG, we put the statement that that if you are applying PTG, you don't have to substitute for the topics that you didn't attend face to face. So it's in the garis panduan. Um, and then for PTG, it means if you can substitute, you can teach anytime, anywhere. Let's say you want to go to field work and it took maybe one week of your time, so you don't have time to replace your class. PTG, that PTG that you uploaded in the ITIL will be considered as a replacement for your lecture. So um, that is the difference between supportive and substitute. In substitute, there's a statement that in the Garis Panduan saying that you can actually substitute your your class online okay the definition of blended learning is 30 percent to 79 percent if you go more than 79 percent your class will be um odl okay so as um defined by the dasar e pembelajaran negara in 2011 it is an is an activity of content activities and assessment conducted online either supporting or replacing. So supporting is PTS, uh, 1732. Replacing is PTG, the 40, 40, 20. Okay. So it will be, the combination will be like this, like this. If you, because we have 14 hours of weeks, so 70% you are using the 40, you are using for conventional, but if you want to substitute for 30 hours, it will be like this. Okay, um, tapi ini I will later go to this. Um, why 36 hours? That is the question that been asked before. Um, 1732 actually um, is is a thirty percent of jumlah jam bersemuka every uh, every week. Because for a three credit three, three credit hours, uh, three credit hours of classes, we have 14 hours, it will be the jumlah jam bersemuka is 40 hour, 42 hours. So 30% of 40 hours will be uh, around 12.6. So we rounded up it to 13 hours. So the 13 hours is one, one for syllabus, plus seven for material, plus three for engagement, and plus two for 
um, assessment. So it is 13 hours. So the 1732 is based on the jumlah jam bersemuka every week. But in PTG, in PTG, it doesn't involve, uh, it doesn't refer to the jumlah jam bersemuka only, but it goes to the SLT, student learning time. Then the only time that we meet with this SLT is in our table four. So the calculation for the 40, 40, 20 is not 40, 40, 20 out of 120 hours. Actually, it start by 30%, We because um, the minimum that we have to achieve is 30%, right? Um, 30% of the 120 hours for three credit hours um, courses. So 30% uh, of 130 hours equals to 36 hours. So from that 36 hours, that, that's come the 14, 14, 8. 14 hours is for the teaching materials. 14 hours is for the student engagement. And 8 hours is for the assessment. So it will be um, uh, 36 hours for PTG. So this is the table, actually. We already counted it for you, for the lecturer. So if your class is a three credit hours and the uh, three credit hours and we choose, because in actually in PTG, we can choose whether um, they, not we, the faculty can decide whether they want to achieve only the 30% of SBL, 40% um, of the SBL or 50% of SBL. Um, let's say, and we only choose the 30% because that is the amalan biasa. We choose the 30% to achieve. Um, so in your in the table four, from for material, there should be 14 hours. Activity is 14 hours. The assessment is is eight hours. So how many classes? Because lecturer will ask how many classes that I can replace. Actually, the minimum that the minimum that you can replace for the, for min, for if you use PTG 30% is four weeks classes. So if it means if you have 14 weeks of class classes, you can replace and choose four topics that you want to conduct online. Maybe you can choose it during, uh, maybe, you know, this week you will be going, going away for conference somewhere and then you want to, you don't want to, um, you don't want to be bothered with the lecture, or everything. So you just put up all your courses during that time. So it depends on the lecturer where, in which topic that they want to do the replacement. So my advice will be, don't choose topic that needs a hands one, hands on activities, because it will be difficult for you to, to, to it's difficult to do it. If it's a, if there's a hands on uh, for the topic, this is the simulation for three credit hours. Okay, if you do, if the faculty um, allowed to up to 40%, so the material hours, uh, this is, this is based on hours, uh, 19 hours, the activity will be 19 hours and the assessment will be 10 hours. And it goes on lah, um, for up to 50%, so you can replace up to seven weeks. But it must go together with your table four, the learning, the SLT in your table four. Bye. This is for two credit hours. It, uh, so the SBL for 30% 30, 30 will be uh, 10 hours for material, 10 hours for activities, and four hours for assessment. Um, this is the example for, for credit hours. Um, I, I think there's a, there are still um, courses which equals to one credit hours, but I haven't prepared the table and all the calculation for this, for the hours. So I'll provide it in the addendum together with the Garis Panduan, which have been uh, um, diluluskan oleh Senate last year. So this is, I think the, this is the new interface. Uh, Dr. Dar, FSSK, FSSA sudah guna yang template baru kah yang ada ni? Apa nama ni? Ada tab ni? Uh, belum, belum. Okay, uh, kita belum, sama, ya. kita sama. In our faculty pun, FSSK, kita, kami punya masih lagi yang di bawah tu putih ada dua saja. So, for those yang first time tengok the SLT memang akan terkejut and then, astaga, kenapa table 4 baru lagi? Actually, it's not baru, it's an improved version because the table 4 yang, this is provided by PPKL, we, we actually, we test this together with other TDA, actually, Dr. Dar have, have, has had helped me a lot 
sebab during that time there are there are formula yang dikunci so thank you to Dr Dar for helping us PEP and to 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 prepare um, this table four yang yang kita boleh buat so I will show you actually a real um, table four which has been developed for this yeah. one okay actually this is dr dar punya syllabus because um, so if this is your first time looking at this table uh, template uh, it was last updated but on the 30th of 13 october last year and so this is as usual lah, because um, you should put your cell or cell or two cell two here the plo and your learning outcome the C1, C2, C3. So, so the, it is the same actually. Uh, this is the place, okay? The teaching and learning tab is the place where you put your learning hours. Okay, the SLT, student learning time. So like this, um, um, my shortcut of preparing this is like this. Because you know, for three credit hours, you have to prepare 14 hours of material, 14 hours of student engagement. So this part is the part of the teaching and learning. So in um, in this um, table for, for materials, one, there's one here, one hour. So it is counted, sini, turun bawah, one. And then the, in this, the non-face-to-face, -face, there's a two, there's a, Number here, two, 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 and then you know, bila campur, everything is 14 hours. Okay, everything is 14 hours. And uh, this is what we call as the teaching materials. The the first 40% is this. Sini, campur sini, online technology synchronous or asynchronous. Because in PTGIs, whether you're doing it synchronous or asynchronous, it's still a PTG. Okay, and then... The second 40%, the 14 jam, is the activities, which is asynchronous because online, kan? So you just put it here for the topic yang you choose to replace and put the number here and then you'll get the 14 in the end. You'll get the 14. And then the rest is as usual, macam kita isi our table for, you just put in your lecture. Uh, macam ini, Dr. Dar, she put the lecture juga face to face but at the same time dia di, dibantu oleh this is the dibantu oleh this asynchronous so it, this is this is okay so you will look here ada di sini dia akan tahu total sbl for learning materials sini is 15 kenapa 15 sebab tadi ada satu di sini kan uh, and then total sbl learning for learning activities 14 so ada cadangan lah, this is the minimum, but this is memang sudah boleh terima because we are going for flexible education. So asal julat dia tu tidaklah sampai 10%, it, it is acceptable. So um, you put in all the assessment macam biasa, yeah? put all the assessment macam biasa, it will auto calculate it for you. Then usually like this, kalau 10 markah memang automatic dia akan kira 3.6. So you put 20, uh, 1.5, they can get up 5.7 as 7.2, macam tu. Automatic, the um, independent learning will be counted here. Kalau di, um, before this, the teaching and learning, we are the one who put the independent learning. Ini, ini, okay. We can change the independent learning here. Okay. Okay. After you put everything else here, semua, you go to the SLT summary. And you will see here, bila tengok sana, actually, this is a guide for you to look whether you have achieved the 30 out, 13, apa, the um, PTG requirement. So, it will be like this, the 36 hours, but the, if you look at the percentage, they memang lah 41, 30, the ideal is 40, 40, 20, but actually, we couldn't, mungkin yang champion, paling champion lah betul boleh dapat, but usually macam saya pun, I got the 40, 40% 40 here, 40, 40, 20, but the SLT will be the 48 hours. So it's either you reach, if you reach the 36 hours minimum, it means you already achieved the PTG. But sometimes I, there are people who are very excited to do the, the to put all the, all the materials online. So 
make sure that your the practice here the the proportion still dalam 40 40 20 but macam ini it's okay lah 40 40 jangan tiba-tiba the the materials is 50 sebab yang lain bermakna it, dia tidak seimbang di sana it should be dalam proportion that 40 40 20 so it, actually this is the guideline yang PPKA dan um auditor will check actually here the final version and actually in the final version dia tidak pun letak di PTG here tiada pun dia cakap PTG dia tidak letak pun so actually the table for actually on this one is helping you how to develop your course to to adhere to the 40 40 20 um 40 40 20 requirement okay Okay, itu sahaja for this this one. Saya kita, I think saya punya saya punya ni pun sudah habis ni. Kecap ya. I look into my PowerPoint. Is there anything? Oh, tiada. Memang tiada. Habis sudah. Okay. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any question, just ask. But if you really macam betul-betul tidak paham in terms of developing your your table for, you can simply email me and ask me questions on this. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you very much. Kalau ada soalan, ya. mungkin saya boleh tengok di apa namanya? Tengok di chat chat box adakah? Ya. Assalamualaikum, Puan Salmi. Saya ada soalan. Dar Yes. Ah, ah, saya ah, ah. Okay, ah, Tadi ah, kalau mengikut ah, Ini mungkin sekali dengan Cik Amin punya lah Tadi saya ada satu tertinggal ah, Tadi cadangan daripada PEP Untuk pengukuran PTG itu Boleh pilih PTG Boleh ah, buat empat kali ah, Upload materials ah, Activities and also assessment Kan? Buat empat mm -hmm. kali lah So empat kali itu maksudnya Dia boleh mencapai itu 30% SLT lah kan hmm. uh, uh, Tapi kalau yang assessment itu uh, Saya agak muskil di situ Kalau empat kali upload assessment Assessment kami tidaklah sebanyak uh, Empat uh, I mean Kami ada For example for one course mungkin Ada final exam Ada ujian Ada uh, mungkin mini project Ada dua tugasan So lima sahaja mungkin penilaian yang di diadakan. Jadi kalau sudah empat daripadanya di adalah uh, online, uh, saya rasa agak sukar untuk uh, di, dicapai lah. Sebenarnya kalau ikut yang di dalam uh, table 4 itu yang saya tulis hanya satu tugasan untuk mewakili uh, eight hours uh, SLT. So satu uh, soalan saya berkenaan uh, assessment lah, uh, pengukuran delapan uh, jam. Uh, 8 SLT untuk uh, assessment ya yeah, so itu yang uh, pertama dan uh, yang kedua adalah cadangan 444 itu tadi ya yeah, uh, 4 material 4 activities 4 assessment uh, saya andaikan itu semua untuk semua kursus untuk semua kursus kayak itu macam mana tuh ada tadi uh, cadangan yang daripada uh, Cik Amin tadi yang oh. empat, empat, empat. Oh tu. Bah, Cik, hmm. Cik Amin macam mana? Mungkin, okay. Ya, mungkin mungkin saya boleh menjawab yang itu uh, Dr. Damisa. Terima kasih Dr. Damisa. So yang cadangan empat, empat, empat tadi uh, kita uh, based on apa, fokus kepada e-assessment ya Dr. Damisa. Uh, sebab soalan Dr. Tamisa tadi uh, contohnya uh, assessment tu uh, tidaklah sampai empat kan tetapi assessment ini sebenarnya uh, dia ni bukanlah berbentuk uh, semuanya tu empat-empat tu adalah berbentuk sumatif tidak semestinya begitu uh, assessment itu uh, mungkin dalam bentuk formatif maksudnya kita tidak perlu membeli, memberikan uh, permakahan yang Pemulik hmm. kepada contohnya 20% lah kan Pada hmm. dalam-dalam seperti mana yang termasuk dalam kita punya table 4 uh, Seperti contohlah saya bagi Mungkin assessment satu tu kita boleh buat dia uh, topical quiz Untuk topik yang kita bagi tu Untuk sebab kita perlu juga uh, mengetahui sama ada Memastikan sama ada pelajar kita fahamkah topik itu kan Jadi uh, kita boleh menilai sama ada dia faham ataupun tidak 
mungkin kita boleh bagi uh, tiga ataupun lima simple uh, topical quiz lah uh, dengan jawab yes or no saja pun boleh kan yang itu uh, dan uh, assessment dalam bentuk uh, assignment pun dikira sebagai assess, uh, e-assessment uh, kita boleh gunakan assignment folder itu untuk pelajar uh, submit nanti dia punya uh, assignment-assignment dia yang untuk kita gradekan nanti di dalam folder itu. Bila kita menggunakan ikon uh, assessment, maksudnya ianya sudah uh, di audit lah sebagai, sebagai uh, salah satu daripada uh, uh, apa, ITEL punya uh, requirement begitu, Doktor. Okey, uh, kalau kalau begitu, uh, table 4 itu uh, Puan Salmi mungkin perlu ada tambahan ruang untuk penilaian lah kalau begitu kan sebab ruang yang ada itu uh, sudah dikunci dan tidak cukup hanya ada 6 row sahaja di situ kan? Uh, yeah. Dr. Dal, saya rasakan uh, macam untuk uh, formatif tidak perlu kita masukkan di dalam di dalam table 4 kan? Cuma yang... Uh, uh, Ya, tapi we, we need to capture sahaja. dalam we need to capture di how we can capture eight hours di dalam table four kita perlu tunjukkan kita sudah capai 8 jam assessment kan di dalam table four itu mungkin uh, benar juga cadangan doktor tu untuk mewujudkan uh, PTG kepada uh, assessment Ya, sebab kalau yang di muka surat depan itu yang 14 14 hours uh, untuk uh, teaching and uh, materials and uh, activities tu boleh di capture di dalam TNL kan? Ya. Yeah. SLT dia kan. Ah, tetapi untuk assessment uh, dia sebenarnya di capture di muka surat yang uh, depan di part assessment. Hmm. Uh, dan perlu perlu dan uh, 8 kredit uh, 8 SLT itu sebenarnya diambil daripada jadual yang di atas itu tapi we have yeah. limited uh, space lah uh, di situ betul mm -hmm. saya rasa perlu uh, di yeah. cadangan saya tambah lah perlu, perlu, di, perlu dibawa juga benda ni dengan mungkin dengan uh, Dr Dennis di PPKA kan untuk kita yeah. uh, 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 pertimbangkan macam mana PPKA boleh pertimbangkan untuk mewujudkan satu lagi kolom uh, dalam table 4 kita tu yang melibatkan uh, assessment supaya ini boleh dikira di dalam PTG nanti mm -hmm. Okey, uh, satu lagi mungkin untuk Encik Amin uh, yeah. saya catat di sini untuk pencapaian uh, PTG tu kita, bo uh, kita boleh uh, andaikan kalau sudah empat uh, material, empat aktiviti, uh, empat assessment itu sudah diupload dan sudah tercapailah 30% itu kan. Uh, yeah. Cuma ada ke tidak beza uh, bilangan uh, mengikut jam kredit sebab kalau tiga jam kredit 30% itu adalah uh, 36 SLT mm. dan mm. kalau dua jam kredit itu dia punya SLT adalah uh, 24 SLT. Yes. So adakah beza sepatutnya pada pendapat saya sepatutnya uh, terdapat perbezaan pengukuran pencapaian mengikut uh, jam kredit sesuatu kursus? Uh, kalau berdasarkan kepada jadual yang telah dibina uh, itu berdasarkan kepada kepada uh, kredit awal 2, 3 ataupun 4 memang ada pembahagian tu doktor? Aa, tapi bilangan uh, bilangan yang diupload sebab uh, kalau bilangan dalam ada kredit, berbeza ada berbeza juga ada, tu, doktor ada berbeza ya? kalau dua jam kredit yeah. tadi uh, berapa uh, material yang perlu sebab tadi hanya ada tadi dalam slide tu hanya ada PTG 1, PTG 2, PTG 3, PTG 4 kan tadi dalam slide yeah, yeah, ya yeah. ya yang itu Aa. adalah berdasarkan kepada contoh saya tadi adalah berdasarkan kepada uh, apa ni tiga jam uh, kredit tiga kredit awal Uh, hmm. Untuk empat kredit awal tadi ada Puan Salmi tunjuk. Mungkin boleh share balik Puan Salmi ya, yang tadi. Uh, hmm. saya rasa yang saya tunjuk tadi adalah berapa jam kalau untuk tu kredit awal is 24 hours kan. So material hmm. will be 10 hours, um, activity will be 10 hours and assessment 4 hours macam tu. Eh 4 hours ya yeah. begitu. Ya yeah, 4 hours. So, um, soalan saya rasa Dr. Dar adalah berapa kriteria yang adakah kriteria kalau satu, satu, satu. untuk 2 jam kredit dalam ITEL kan Dr. Dar? 
Ya, yeah. dalam ITEL. Sebab dalam ITEL, ITEL tidak dapat capture SLT kan? Yes. Uh, ITEL, ITEL, uh, ITEL tidak dapat capture SLT yang sepatutnya uh, PTG itu adalah berdasarkan uh, uh, SLT. Tapi uh, sebagai alternatif tadi, PIP mencadangkan uh, pencapaian itu boleh diukur mengikut bilangan dokumen yang dimuat naik yang tadi yeah. PTG 1 sampai PTG 4. Tapi yeah. uh, itu yang saya nyatakan tadi uh, pada yeah. pendapat saya sepatutnya ada perbezaan uh, yeah. dari segi bilangan yang dimuat naik mengikut jam kredit. Mm -hmm. Sebab pada dasarnya uh, PTG adalah berdasarkan kepada uh, peratusan SLT. 3 jam kredit 36 uh, SLT, 2 jam kredit adalah 24 SLT. Sepatutnya bilangan dokumen pada pendapat saya tidak 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 boleh samalah. Hmm, okey, okey, okey. Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, saya saya akui itu. Uh, sebab contoh yang saya bagi tadi itu, yang saya bina itu adalah berdasarkan bal tiga kerja awal saja ya, Doktor. Yeah. <laughs> yang satu, dua, tiga, empat itu kan. Uh, ya, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, nanti saya akan uh, bina lagi untuk jadual uh, berdasarkan kepada dua dan empat. Dan ada juga uh, uh, fakulti yang ada lapan kerja awal ya, Doktor. Nanti kami akan bina lah itu jadual-jadual uh, tu uh, dan akan di 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 edarkan kepada semua uh, fakulti uh, maksud saya uh, FPIA lah supaya uh, mudah menjadi rujukan semua standardizekan dia lah terima kasih doktor atas cadangan ni tu saya, saya terlepas pandang yang tu sebab saya hanya <laughs> berdasarkan kepada tiga kredit awal dan contoh tu pun hanya berdasarkan kepada tiga kredit awal Ah, uh, it's okay. Yeah, uh, kita memang sudah sama-sama masa kesemasa kan? Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, so uh, untuk uh, Puan Salmi, uh, itu uh, independent learning itu boleh uh, kosong kah untuk sesuatu topik? Itu saya rasa ada soalan uh, masa bengkel kita bersama uh, uh, di awal yeah. tahun tu kan? Ya, ya, 13 Januari itu, itu boleh dibenarkan kosong kah untuk uh, sesuatu topik? Okey, kalau by definition um, PTG, kalau sudah bila dia buat asynchronous, actually dia sudah buat independent learning. So dia boleh kosong hmm. untuk independent so, learning. Boleh. Ah, boleh. boleh kosong ya? Okey. Ya. Right. Dan yang terakhir dari saya adalah uh, hari itu saya rasa mungkin ada soalan yang uh, perlukah uh, kuliah itu Uh, sama juga dengan uh, 28 uh, SLT di mana kuliah dengan uh, apa ada kolom yang dua itu kan uh, itu perlu jumlah 28 kah sebab saya go through uh, apa tu saya go through yang uh, KPT punya panduan yang uh, PTG contoh yang pertama tu uh, dia mencapai 28 tapi contoh yang kedua untuk dua jam kredit melebihi 14 pula. Jadi sudah adakah tu daripada uh, PPKM berkenaan yang itu? Um, setakat ini belum lagi daripada PPKM sebab benda ini saya fikir itu yang perlu kita sit together TDA dengan PPKM sekali sebab when it comes to yang um, berapa minggu, berapa topik tu kita masih lagi masih belum sure kan? Kita masih belum sure. That's why we have when it comes to the academic part yang begini we have to we sit together with PPKF for that. Tapi saya, saya faham tu sebab bila dengan bila cek universiti lain pun dia ada beza tu. Bila tanya eh kami buat 10 topik sejak boleh. But there are certain place dia bilang eh mesti juga 12, 14 minggu. So we are um, mungkin kita kena refer balik kepada PPKF but um, saya just pernah refer secara informal um, di um, macam mana? Apabila kita buat table for dahulu, dia tidak mengambil kira tentang um, online learning, dia conventional. Dia conventional. Jadi sekarang ni apabila sudah ada online learning, um, dia punya patutnya peraturan itu berubah. Tapi tidak ada yang bertulis, kalau yang saya ingatlah di peringkat UMS bertulis yang menyatakan dia perlu berubah atau tidak. So we just masih follow yang yang dulu, yang MTA one to one tu, kan? Doktor Dan? Ya, yeah, one to one kan? Ya, yeah. uh, kita ada one yang rules one to one tu kan? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That, that's the issue that PEP, sebab we are, we are 
untuk end learning punya delivery but we still have to follow yang academic punya from PPK. So this is the thing that I think we should discuss within the faculty di KPDA mungkin with PPK nanti. But thank you Dr. Dar for reminding because nanti inilah saya menjadi menjadi hantu raya kepada pengarah PPK. Ya, itu saja dari saya. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Dar. So kita ada satu, uh, kita sudah ada nampak muka si Prof. Assalamualaikum Prof. Ceria pagi. Uh, aku tertarik buat dengan cara kau mau bentang ini. Ya. <laughs> ya. Si Prof pun, pun tidak buat macam kau. Jadi kau ajarlah bakal kami macam mana mau buat. Dia begini yang saya nampak which is um, cadangan saya lah kepada PP sebab kita beralih daripada konvensional kepada yang sedikit digital lah um, dan apa tu saya pikir in future kita juga akan beralih kepada mungkin ialah ODL yang kita tengah apa sekarang ni so in future mungkin kita pergi kepada maybe dalam 100% ataupun mungkin sampai 90% kepada online jadi cadangan saya kepada PIP, mana-mana yang saya pikir berguna dan boleh membantu pensyara almaklumlah kami yang tuan-tuan ni kan sal. Kau muda lagi. Lagi dia okey, lagi dah. Mungkin dia ada satu kursus yang bersiri lah yang kita boleh um, bincang dengan BSM. Dijadikan sebagai kursus pembelajaran sepanjang hayat <laughs> CPD tu lah. <laughs> Contohnya nak macam mana buat video, macam mana buat macam kau punya pembantangan, ada gambar cantik goyang-goyang, ada backgroundnya begitu. Memang saya tahu ada banyak benda kita belajar di anu di, di YouTube lah. Tapi kalau kalau lah ada mana-mana yang boleh menyokong kepada agenda PEP, kita asipidikan dia dan jadikan sebagai satu training pembelajaran sepanjang hayat. Itu itu pandangan saya lah. Yang kedua. Um, daripada pembantangan tadi saya boleh nampak lah sekarang ni lebih jelas lah uh, macam mana alignment dia kepada kursus-kursus yang ada tu um, cuma masih juga yang bahagian ke apa tu um, equivalence itulah mungkin kalau kita lebih lebih, lebih jelas kita translate kan um, format yang apa tu kesetaraan itu dan kita boleh um, Lihat balik dalam table 4 itulah mungkin daripada sana kita sudah nampak berapa berapa komponen supaya kita memenuhi keperluan PTG inilah dan satu perkara yang kawan-kawan kena tahu juga um, kementerian sekarang ini pun sudah membincangkan empat apa dua U dua H dua U dua H tu U tu tu U tu H Nah, uh, tahu konsep macam mana tu lah dua dua tahun di universiti, dua tahun di rumah. Tapi konsep rumah tu masih lagi diperdebatkan adakah betul-betul duduk duduk di rumah atau mungkin duduk di hostel. Saya pun tak pastilah uh, masih dalam peringkat perancangan. Dan saya kira um, uh, pertanyaan saya kepada PIP, kalaulah itu dia realisasikan, uh, macam mana um, konteks? PTG kita sekarang ni 40, 40, 20 ni boleh menyokong kepada agenda itu. Dan sejauh mana kita boleh pergi kepada tentu ODL punya punya direction. Kalau saya boleh nampak lah dalam sekarang ni kementerian seem to be go from the conventional way. Sekarang ni half-half lah, mungkin sikit lah, 30% saja kan. Kepada 30, maybe pergi kepada up to 70% ataupun beyond kalau nak pergi ODL lah. Jadi kalau nak kata, kalau kita pergi kepada 70%, which is masih dalam dalam kita punya PTJ kan, kalau 70% kan, masih dalam kes itu. Jadi, um, way forward kita macam mana ni, ini, ini, ini sal macam macam tak ngam saya jawab tu prof tapi prof do you have any to respond to this first yes thank you thank you uh, prof Jolang ya yeah. atas semua komen komen uh, berkaitan dengan tujuh uh, tujuh punya 
cadangan from our kementerian. So, uh, as saya difahamkan, they want to actually, uh, number, the objective behind it, uh, to save costs. And number two, they want to maximize, optimize online learning because of the pengalaman uh, and kokot lah, their own research, they find that uh, online learning memang berkesan juga. In a certain way lah, okay, with limitation. So, still under debate, still under debate. Uh, next week, under MAPTA meeting, we're having a meeting to discuss about this issue also. So, I'll be updating uh, UMS. Now, uh, a very important announcement. I think Point Sami, maybe I can make the important announcement now concerning our meeting with the top management next week. Okay. Now, uh, uh, we have been going around and uh, now it's the already 11 uh, faculty that we have uh, meet up. So with the feedback, uh, we realized that uh, for next semester, I tell, which is quite similar to the smart UMS V3, uh, it will be implemented. And the JTMK will optimize our new platform, I tell, for all graduate, uh, for all uh, academic staff and all students. Uh, that's number one. Number two, very important announcement. Uh, we should be endorsed uh, next week by uh, our Dr. Pai Sanchala will be the PTG and the tab new table 4 will be implemented not next semester, bukan next semester, but it will be implemented fully only in the new SESI 2003, 2023, 2024. So now we are, next semester is still a time period for us to explore the use of our PTG. Okay, I think that is the most important uh, announcement. I can give at the moment. Uh, Point Sami, you'd like to add in? Okay, thank you, Prof. Berita gembira lah tu, Prof Galang. <laughs> Maknanya next sesi lah baru kita guna tu 14, 14, 20. But practice, kita ada satu semester untuk practice lah. Okay. Dia juga gembira. Sebab kami baru kasih apa tu murnikan table 4 kami. Baru bawa ke senet baru-baru <laughs> ini. Mm. Yes, Jadi yes. kita akan ubah lagi. Adalah sikit perubahan dia tu lah. Tapi basically kita ni di UMS ni kan kalau ada berubah sedikit selalu macam berubah banyak sebab kita kena redo the whole things. Yes. Hanya sedikit yes. itu kita kena ubah the entire. Sama kerja juga kita kena copy yes. paste sana. So I don't know. Ada 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 idea bini yang kawan kawan bagitaulah yang kita sebenarnya kita tidak perlu mengubah banyak benda betul mm -hmm. um, maybe we can have some dashboard and then we just fill up the um, things in the dashboard and then how the dashboard go to the table for itu kita realign lah jadi maksudnya kita tidak perlu fit in every time we make a change we need to fit in uh, sama juga konsep dia macam LNPT pun sama ini yang saya ada cerita lah dulu macam mana isu bila kita di peringkat pensyarah ni kan kita kena pit banyak benda lah kena pit dengan uh, PSM kena pit dengan pasca kena pit dengan dengan um, uh, apa tu akademik dengan PPP PPPI so, semua ni kita kena pit dengan platform yang berbeza kan Setiap kali make a change, kita kena pit benda lah yang, yang mana. LNPT berubah, kena pit lagi. Jadi, the same concept, kita ada, mungkin ada dashboard yang bersesuaian dengan kita punya agenda ni lah. So, so kalau ada perubahan pun, kita tambah yang berubah saja lah. Yang lain tu kita kena realignkan begitu. So, mungkin kita create something yang macam ini, in, in the future. Supaya, yes. kita tahu, I think academic is quite progressive. Um, yes. Uh, from time to time, we always make a change. I think, daripada dulu kan, especially in our FSSA lah, saya ingat lagi, dulu saya pandai sudah tu table 4, table 3 lah yang lama tu. Mahir sudah hmm. kan, tiba-tiba change, apa sudah ni? Jadi, when things change, basically, seem to be the entire table 4 itu 
berubah bah. Jadi sebab kena kena bukan kena berubah apa kita kena pick the things all the time. Walaupun ubahnya sedikit, ah, begitu. So maybe in the in the future kan kita cuba uh, collaborate dengan JTMK uh, supaya benda ni kita permudahkan. So kita tahu macam you are di apa tu orang kata um, apa tu orang yang merancang sesuatu kan. Tapi when come to implementation, we'll go to the faculty. Jadi kita berhadapan dengan kawan-kawan ni, ramai ni yang marah sama TDA, marah sama dekan ni. Apa ini balik-balik ubah ini dia bilang. Jadi mm-hmm. kita pun nak bagi tahu ini ini propung punya sur, eh, apa, <laughs> propung banyak suruh ini. Tapi tidak juga sampai hati kan di sisi industri punya agenda kan. Jadi kita mau bilang propung punya salah, tidak juga boleh. Jadi kita kita bertahan sejalan di peringkat fakulti kandang. Nah, jadi begitulah kami punya kami punya apa tu um, pertahanan kami lah kami punya kalis senjata kan bertahan dengan soalan-soalan yes. maut daripada kawan-kawan ni kan <laughs> yes 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 uh, i think i think it's time to for us to apa uh, fully utilize di apa tu ITs lah uh, yes supaya kita tidak perlu lagi beralih dari satu masa ke semua even peralihan daripada smart b3 ni pun kepada yang betul betul saya baru ni pun sebenarnya mau tidak mau kita kena re-upload balik nota kita kena itu lagi jadi sebenarnya banyak benda yang berubah dan kita tahu yang memang saya sebut tadi akademik memang agak progresif jadi Betul. Uh, mudah-mudahan tidak berubah lagi lah lepas ini ya 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 <laughs> ini satu Betul. lagi perempuan yang yang harus kita boleh upload video kah dia boleh simpan video kah semua boleh, boleh. termasuk Assignment pelajar tahu video tu. Nah, sekarang ni saya sudah beralih pelajar suka apa membuat video. Bebanin dengan menulis. Kalau menulis buruk betul dia punya laporan. Betul. Jadi kalau video tu, wah cantik hebat betul. Jadi masalahnya tidak boleh upload bagi link saja. Nah. Ya. So, Semua boleh. Tahu, Semua kan? boleh. How, how, what is the limitation of this new platform? Yes. Uh, Insya Amiruji, do you think you like to show your own course? Uh, yes, uh, let's just uh, okay, Kalau kalau boleh saya share saya punya uh, apa yang telah saya uh, uh, buat di dalam uh, course saya. Eh? I menggunakan ITEL pada okay. semester yes. ini. Bentar ya. Okay. Uh, ini ini adalah uh, uh, LMS saya, kos LMS saya lah uh, menggunakan ITEL. Uh, kami uh, di PEP sudah menggunakan ITEL lah pada semester ni untuk untuk uh, macam uh, uji lazi bani sebenarnya <laughs> kan juga pada masa yang sama. Uh, so anyway, uh, sedikit tentang uh, ITEL saya yang sebagai contoh. Uh, seperti biasalah ITEL ni dia ada editing on kat sini kan apabila kita hendak buat nak nak masuk nak menggunakan itu macam juga dalam uh, smart UMS ya ada editing on uh, apa yang saya nak share di sini adalah uh, khusus saya adalah dalam bentuk uh, hybrid jadi uh, saya akan letakkan uh, the information the most important information dekat sini lah ya maksudnya pelajar akan masuk saja saya akan masuk uh, dalam dalam kuliah saya bersemuka saya secara fizikal dan juga secara uh, uh, online uh, dengan link ini maksudnya apabila mereka bersama dengan saya di di uh, dewan kuliah ada yang uh, mengikut kuliah saya uh, menggunakan ITEL sahaja uh, yang berada di luar negara itu yang e-mobility itu pada pada saya yang berada di luar negara itu dia akan of course lah uh, secara sepenuhnya melalui ITEL uh, uh, online. Jadi ini adalah contoh saya banyak menggunakan Genially dalam uh, kursus saya. Contoh bagaimana uh, saya memperkenalkan kursus saya. Jadi uh, ini dalam bentuk interaktif lah. Eh. Uh, kita kena kenalkan uh, pencarah itu di apa koordinator uh, untuk kursus itu. Dan dalam ini juga saya memasukkan saya punya CLO 123 saya. Uh, dan uh, sedikitlah encouragement di hujung dia ya, uh, fun learning. So uh, disebabkan di dalam ITEL ini tidak ada 
buat masa ini tidak ada ikon sinopsis maka saya uh, be, uh, saya memperkenalkan kursus saya berdasarkan kepada inilah dan di bawah ini sedikit uh, tentang uh, kursus saya uh, ini adalah uh, rubrik assess, assessment rubrik yang saya bagi kepada pelajar saya dalam bentuk uh, digital dan uh, mereka uh, boleh cek rubrik ber, uh, kerja mereka berdasarkan kepada rubrik-rubrik ini Maksudnya kita tak sembunyikan rubrik inilah. Pelajar pun tahu dia dapat lima daripada mana, kenapa dia dapat empat dan kenapa dia dapat lapan, sembilan ataupun sepuluh. Jadi mudah untuk kita membantu pelajar kita capai uh, yang the maximum jika mereka berdasarkan kepada rubrik yang telah kita bagi kepada mereka. Uh, ini contoh rubrik dan ketiga-tiga assignment saya pun dalam bentuk begitu. Uh, kemudian submission. Assignment saya meletakkan folder ini untuk mereka submit. Jadi pelajar submit dia punya uh, interaction uh, assignment dia dalam bentuk digital di dalam inilah. Jadi saya boleh uh, klik di sana dan saya akan nampak uh, semua assignment-assignment yang telah mereka hantar kepada saya. Submission-submission tu ya. Uh, selain daripada itu untuk video untuk video saya ada buat dalam bentuk begini. Ini adalah salah satu daripada video presentation juga yang saya kongsikan dengan pelajar dan uh, untuk ini adalah uh, saya bagi 10% untuk pelajar membuat presentation mereka dalam bentuk video. Tetapi saya menggunakan platform uh, Flipgrid uh, pelajar cuma masuk ke dalam uh, ITEL Uh, sama ada melalui uh, kod ataupun melalui uh, QR code ataupun melalui uh, link yang saya bagi. Maksudnya mereka uh, akan buat uh, rakaman dan upload di dalam ITEL menggunakan uh, platform yang telah saya sediakan. Ini adalah topical quiz saya sebab saya tidak ada uh, mid midterm exam dan saya hanya menggunakan topical quiz lah uh, khusus uh, Markah daripada kuis ini akan uh, accumulate, uh, accumulated into 20% untuk mereka punya semester, uh, 20% semester mark. Uh, ini adalah pembahagian dalam bentuk uh, modul khusus. Uh, di sini semua khusus-khusus saya dalam bentuk generally. Maksudnya pelajar dengan saya sama-sama masuk dalam uh, generally ini apabila waktu kuliah langsung. Uh, ini adalah contoh infografik yang telah saya ambil maklumat-maklumat dan masukkan dia turn it into infografik supaya memudahkan pelajar. Jadi kalau kita sudah ada yang ini dan yang ini maksudnya saya ada sudah ada dua konten uh, saya untuk pelajar saya. Manakala contoh yang lain saya bagi ini adalah bentuk forum activity dan saya sediakan juga kepada mereka token ya, dalam bentuk batch. Maksudnya pelajar saya apabila mereka Uh, participate di dalam uh, forum ini mereka akan dapat badge tetapi of course kita boleh sediakan kriteria bagaimana mereka hendak dapatkan badge itu ha, kita boleh uh, yang itu kita boleh boleh tetapkan dengan dengan uh, maksudnya pesyarah boleh tetapkan apakah kriteria-kriteria untuk mereka dapat macam dekat sini active participation with three to five input ataupun responses we receive top contributor badge maka pelajar tu apabila mereka buka saja mereka punya LMS untuk kursus ini mereka nampak batch ni sudah dapat. Jadi mereka boleh berkumpul lah se sebanyak mana batch yang mereka mahu. Eh. Uh, untuk video, saya menjemput pensyarah luar, uh, expert in the field sebab saya bukan expert dalam uh, Child Protection and Child Act. Jadi saya menjemput and Madam um, uh, Krista uh, Krista ni untuk bagi talk. Jadi saya apa yang saya buat adalah saya rakam uh, talk tersebut dan saya uh, uh, convert video uh, daripada Madam Citra ini dalam ke dalam YouTube. Apabila sudah convert dalam YouTube barulah saya embed ke dalam ITEL. Kenapa kita kena uh, sebaiknya convert dahulu ke dalam bentuk YouTube supaya video itu boleh compress kalau kita directly masukkan dia dalam ITEL, dia terlampau heavy untuk 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 ITEL bawa. Jadi tak banyak nanti kita boleh uh, upload dalam ITEL. Dalam YouTube dia dah compress the size. Jadi size itu agak kecil dan boleh banyak video-video yang boleh kita upload. 
Di sini pun ada lagi video yang saya upload daripada uh, presenter, uh, daripada expert from the field dan juga selain daripada itu, di sini saya share sedikit uh, forum. Saya buat online forum, ada dua panelis saya dan uh, selepas forum itu berlangsung, saya uh, videokan forum itu dan uploadkan dalam ini. Jadi um, walaupun pelajar participate semasa live uh, online forum itu tetapi uh, mereka juga dapat melihat semula maklumat-maklumat uh, yang terkandung di dalam forum itu melalui rakaman yang telah kita masukkan ke dalam uh, ITEL. Jadi ITEL saya ni uh, sebenarnya adalah hub pembelajaran untuk kursus ini. Semua maklumat semua ada dalam ini. Dan uh, sedikit saya mahu tunjuk contoh bagaimana ATEL ini dapat membantu kita seperti mana yang uh, Prof uh, Jualang cakap tadi. Saya nak contoh, inilah kot saya ambil contoh ni. Ya. Uh, di sini uh, saya uh, menggunakan Generally. Uh, dalam dalam konten saya ini, saya uh, ada masukkan juga sedikit elemen uh, contoh di sini, ya, related theories. Uh, dalam related theories ini, uh, saya ada hyperlink yang bawa mereka ke maklumat yang lain. Jadi kita tahu pelajar kita akan pergi ke uh, ke sini untuk uh, ke link ini untuk uh, dapatkan maklumat-maklumat yang yang kita mahu mereka uh, dapatlah. Yeah. Uh, dan oh, terkeluar pula saya. Tersilap tekan pula saya. Sekejap <laughs> tak maaf. Tersilap tekan uh, ini. Button. Okey. Selain daripada ini, selain dalam bentuk uh, uh, words, uh, perkataan, uh, teks, saya juga ada uh, menyediakan maklumat yang sama dalam bentuk video. Uh, ini adalah disebabkan oleh kita aware bahawa pelajar kita ni berbagai the diversity of our student yang kita perlu capture. Uh, student kita ada yang tak suka membaca tapi suka mendengar, melihat, menonton. So benda yang sama saya capture mereka dalam bentuk uh, video. Jadi mereka boleh menonton video ini. Video-video ini adalah daripada uh, daripada inilah daripada YouTube lah ya. So uh, benda maksudnya mereka yang tak malas membaca tu boleh tengok video. Yang tak suka tengok video, yang lebih suka membaca tu boleh teng boleh tengok tengok uh, tengok uh, boleh membaca lah daripada uh, teks yang saya bagi tadi. Uh, itu bagaimana kita untuk cater the needs of diversity pelajar-pelajar kita dan bagaimana kita boleh uh, uh, increase mereka punya participation di dalam uh, penggunaan uh, teknologi uh, learning teknologi menggunakan uh, dalam kes ini uh, ITEL. Uh, itu <laughs> sedikitlah daripada saya. Terima kasih Tuan Amin. Kalau macam ni tidak sia-sia lah migrate lah. <laughs> boleh, boleh Prof. Nanti uh, yang lima, lima, lima apa, wakil daripada fakulti tu nanti uh, kita akan uh, masukkan elemen-elemen inilah untuk mereka hmm. balik nanti ke fakulti buat in-house training dengan uh, kumpulan yeah. mereka masing-masing. Yang tuan-tuan ni kena one-to-one -one training. Ya yeah, boleh tu Prof. Don't worry. Yeah. Senang saya ni Prof. Senang Dan aja. satu lagi ini Tuan Amin, yang ini ya, kita, kalau kita sudah develop satu kita punya lecture ini kan kita hmm. macam juga smart vitri bahkan kita boleh transportkan dia kan Boleh Apa boleh ya The following semester ataupun tidak perlu lagi kita kita guna satu platform ya tak payahlah semester ini tukar, semester itu tukar macam yang sebelum ini uh, nah. Yang itu pun dalam 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 hmm boleh boleh di diurus tu uh, tu prof maksudnya kita cuma ubah uh, uh, kekalkan uh, itu apa platform itu untuk semester tahun hadapan ya semester yang akan datang contohnya Itulah, semester kita satu, sudah macam cantik bah jadi kita tambah tambah sejalah delete mana yang perlu ubah yang perlu tambah kita, lagi kita develop atas apa yang ha. ada saja ya tak payah ha. lagi kita buka satu lagi buka lagi satu buka lagi satu ha, ya. betul betul ha, ini kali mantap lah ha. Jadi betul. apa Ada sekali kita buat tambah baik saja. Betul Prof. Prof di ITEL baru Prof sebenarnya dia ada satu fungsi reuse cost. Reuse. Ah. Maknanya kalau kita sudah develop cost, 
Kita mau guna hmm. balik, kita tekan sejak reuse cost, dia akan balik, dia guna balik. Yang kita sudah prepare. Ah, itu yang, yang paling kita. sesuai untuk orang tua juga. Orang muda tidak dapat, dia bertenaga buat benda baru, setiap kali buat baru. Yang tua-tua enggak, -tua sekali harum saja itu. Ya, kita Sama -sama kita kita mem memudahkan Prof. Uh, dalam ITEL ini kita cuba memudahkan supaya ianya tidak uh, membebankan uh, pengguna. Pengguna itu kita lah sebenarnya ni kan yang yang dibuat konten itu. Well done, well done. Yeah. Thank you lah. Mempermudahkan. Can I respond? Can I respond dengan you punya cadangan tadi tu? Ada lima tu tadi yang saya dapat capture. Pertama, Prof bagi tahu tentang cadangan kursus bersiri apa? Pembelajaran sepanjang hayat. Actually PEP we want to grow together dengan pencara lain bukan PEP sejak yang tahu pasal teknologi. So what we do memang kita akan kerja dengan sekarang BCAP but actually di macam di FSSA some of the lecturer kami memang sudah hantar training ke, ke ber, kepada KPT dan dapat sijil KPT uh, My Digital Educator. FSSA sekarang ada empat orang yang memang certified boleh train untuk membangunkan konten. Dr Sarima penyelaras Um, Dr. Hadian Shah, Dr. Laki dengan Dr. Nur Amira. Ada orang tu memang ada sijil. Jadi mereka ini sebenarnya boleh membantu fakulti untuk membangunkan post konten yang macam yang dok, um, Prof suka tengok tu lah yang ada bergerak-gerak sana sini. Sebenarnya they are capable sebab they, mereka ini certified. Memang saya dapat copy of the sijil yang mereka ini certified untuk pengajar. So itu untuk cover sebab we want we want semua bukan satu dua orang dia tahu tapi semua pencara UMS ni dia at least tahu um, how to develop a quality and interesting course content. Okay. Prof, dia hantar orang bawa prof nanti untuk mentor TOT. Kita Atau pun kita boleh hantar baru boleh. juga. Hantar baru yang yang, yang juga. agak boleh tambah lagi. Yang ni sudah terer. Empat orang ni sudah terer kita hantar yang baru lagi bagus. <laughs> Lepas tu, kita we will do the kesetaraan. We will do the kesetaraan in terms of ITEL. The ITEL. Yang ketiga, pasal Prof cakap tentang ni, bila kita, how, how, macam mana kita prepare to you to edge ni nanti ke arah ODL. Sekarang ni, ni mesti lain pun, dia going, dia sangat aktif dalam MOOC, MC, ODL. Kita UMS lagi yang masih, uh, masih lagi kita mau belajar. Sebab kita masih bergaduh dengan PTG kan. <laughs> But, um, What we're doing, bila, kita, bila melibatkan student, there's a need for us to engage the student as well. Dan ini dicadangkan sebenarnya bila kami engagement dengan FKI, dekat FKI cadangkan, PPEP untuk engage the student untuk tengok what is the perception bila kita buat online. So berdasarkan, sebab dia, mereka ni lah kita punya stakeholder sebenarnya, dia klien kita. So we have to have their engagement as well. So bila kita cuba berubah ke, kepada semua to I to which semua lah apa siapa yang set kan? At least kita punya main client ini kita kita apa keperluan dia. So that is actually in in the picture lah that based on the suggestion dar, daripada um, our dalam our yeah, show. Jadi when it comes bila kita mau bila kita mau buat online semua. Dia mesti seiring dengan kita punya infrastruktur dan kita punya infrastruktur. So kita bergantung dengan um, JTMK. That's why saya rasa few in January, Kementerian PT ada minta, adakah UMS boleh melaksanakan pembelajaran hybrid? So um, PEP masa itu diminta menjawab, saya jawab iya, tapi saya jawab juga di sana, tetapi kami masih perlu uh, perlu pertambahan budget dari segi menyediakan platform yang sangat yang friendly kepada lecturer. Jadi memang kita minta 10 juta juga kata prof. But kalau itu kita dapat maknanya hari raya kita prof, maknanya kita boleh um, kita boleh train lebih ramai orang. Um, bukan PEP paksa tunggu bila saya available siap boleh 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 train orang. So kita macam grow together. Jadi bila macam FSSA mau okey kita mau orang pakar ODL Oh, sampai jauh-jauh kita ada pakar ODL di sini misalnya. So, that is in the process now. Macam mana kita berkembang dan kita punya KRA pun sudah berubah. But we are going towards that and we are preparing towards that. But actually, sebenarnya saya saya lihat, ini pandangan pribadi saya lah, FSSA ni, um, of course lah, dia, dia banyak soalan-soalan yang mencabar, dia boleh mencabar ketebalan muka untuk menjawab. But that that is an experience untuk how do we respond and how we help people so that bila dia buat berdapat berdepan dengan teknologi ini dia tidak rasa macam berkerut. Dia tidak berkerut. 
Bila saya minta student saya perkenalkan diri anda dalam kelas ambil masa setengah jam. To cut it short, saya kata, you go to flip grid, ambil video, rakam diri sendiri, kenalkan diri sendiri. Tiba-tiba my student kata, Puan, bolehkah kami guna TikTok? No, apakah bendahnya TikTok ni lagi? But the thing is, our student is changing. Dia memang akan sangat advance. That's why saya ketawa bila Prof bagi tahu tadi, student kita lebih suka buat video. Dan video dia lagi canggih-canggih. But that is the nature of our students. We just embrace that. But as long as... Yang paling penting adalah kita mengajar subjek matter itu. Um, the medium macam mana mereka menyampaikan kefahaman itu sudah berbeza. Tidak live assignment. But through um, um, video misalnya. So, um, thank you Prof. Memang cadangan Prof itu memang saya akan quote ya, Prof. Bila kami berbincang dengan BCAP nanti. Sebab latihan ini memang. Latihan is the very first thing that we, have, we should do. Supaya kita boleh menghasilkan output yang baik. Saya rasa itu saja dari Prof. Daripada saya Prof, thank you Prof. Thank you kepada semua yang hadir mendengar um, jeraya, jeraya wara daripada PEP pada hari ini. Ada lagi soalan yang lain kah? Bagi Chan lah yang balik dekan yang bercakap ni. Mana tahu bagi, ambil peluang lah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Boleh bertanya kah? Boleh Dr. Ben. Iya, saya ni pun orang tua juga ni. Lebih kurang Prof dekan juga ni. Uh, saya, saya takut terlepas tadi itu nak tanya berkaitan dengan uh, uh, semester depan ni adakah kita menggunakan Smart V3 lagi ataupun ITEL tu uh, kalau boleh harapan saya ni orang tua ni uh, guna salah satu sajalah yang kedua berkaitan dengan table 4 uh, kami di peringkat program uh, pernah buat uh, bengkel untuk memurnikan table 4 uh, program aquaculture lah Uh, tahun lepas, uh, bulan Ogos 2022. Dan saya lihat sendiri, saya punya table 4, saya dapati macam tidak memenuhi PTG itu tadi. Uh, dia tidak 40, 40, 20. Sedangkan table 4 itu telah dimajukan ke fakulti. Jadi adakah uh, boleh dibuat perubahan uh, kepada table 4 itu? tuh uh, Ataupun saya boleh meneruskan Uh, menggunakan table 4 yang telah dimurnikan itu untuk semester depan ni sebab uh, macam Prof Fong maklumkan tadi itu bersyukur jugalah yang uh, PTG ni akan dilaksanakan uh, untuk sesi yang akan datang so uh, harap dapat uh, penjelasan lah da terutama daripada fakulti terima kasih so um, saya rasa kalau untuk yang table 4 Um, saya fikir dengan fakulti lah kan boleh boleh respon yang itu. Cuma um, dari segi mana itu Dr. Ben pasal Dr. Ben tu, ya. penggunaan uh, sama ada Smart V3 ataupun ITEL semester, uh, semester depan ni. Kalau boleh harapan tu kita guna salah satu sajalah. Tak perlu dua-dua uh, ni. Terima kasih. Kalau berdasarkan Amin macam mana? Kita memang buat kita pindah ke ITEL untuk semester depan. Ya, untuk semester depan kita akan menggunakan ITEL. Tetapi uh, uh, yang kita setuju dalam perbincangan kita, ITEL uh, sebab uh, SMART tidak akan diselenggarakan lagi. So uh, it will be very slow uh, untuk semester depan. Jadi uh, kita akan teruskan dengan uh, ITEL. Cuma PTG implementasi uh, IPG itu mas seperti mana yang diumumkan oleh uh, Prof Fong tadi, uh, mas kita akan bawa ke uh, semester uh, maksudnya tahun hadapan lah semester satu tahun hadapan. Ya, yeah, allow me to just add one thing. Silakan Prof. So, terima kasih uh, atas semua komen and all the questions. So as we see that uh, next week we are meeting. Uh, top management uh, and so that uh, we see to get a memo that will be signed from pejabat we see and that will be on dua perkara yang sangat penting number satu uh, penggunaan ITEL sepenuhnya semester depan and number two the pelaksanaan pembelajaran teradun gantian bersama dengan table 4 yang baru itu dalam sesi Akademik sesi yang baru. Thank you. So the official statement, lah, official memo will come up from pejabat BC next week. Thank you.
kasih Prof. Wong uh, Puan Salmi. Okey, um, saya rujuk kepada soalan Dr. Junaidi ya. Kalau dapat dipertimbangkan semula formula 40-40-20 dikurangkan lagi. Sama ada 20-20-10 sebagai permulaan atau yang penting kurang. Um, Dr. Junaidi, 40-40-20 um, itu memang itu gazetted peringkat uh, kebangsaan. Memang semua universiti guna 40-40-20. So that's why um, kita datang awal sekarang ini untuk just bagi, um, just buka mata lah. And then you try to fill in your table for first and then tengok sama ada dia boleh mencapai PTE ataupun tidak. Right? You, you can look. Saya rasa Dr. Abentin pun tanya benda yang sama tadi. Macam mana kalau tidak mencapai? So in the earlier tadi saya ada cakap um, because the process of our reporting for KPT is um, berapa banyak kursus yang sudah PTG, berapa kursus ditawarkan secara PTS. So memang dalam sains, especially dalam sains dan yang ada sijil profesional, dia memang ada keperluan dia, they have to add it. So if memang your process memang tidak dapat mencapai itu, so fine, tidak tidak kena rotan, tidak dipukul. It it means your 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 process is PT PTS, you are supporting your teaching. So it's okay. It's fine. Jadi itu adalah di bawah fakulti punya apa? Uh, makluman fakulti, so fakulti boleh maklumkan kami kursus-kursus ini tidak dilaksanakan secara PTG. So we give the priority to the faculty untuk decide kursus mana yang memang PTG, mana tidak. Jadi sebab memang we are going to flexible education. We cannot force everyone to, to macam one size fits all untuk semua bah. So it's up to you are the subject matter. You know whether ini boleh online ke tidak. So You have the justification for it. So kami di PIP, as long as it goes, hanyalah kita terima oh kursus ini PTG, okay, kursus ini PTS. When it comes to the language of LNPT, dua-dua lulus. Itu saja. Yang penting sekarang ni, that's why we are going for quality. So the delivery itu sampai, regardless PTG ataupun PTS. Is it okay, Dr. Abentin, begitu? Boleh okay. saya tambah satu lagi yang pasal table 4 tadi tu, uh, kami okay. punya table 4 ni uh, tahun lepas telah dimurnikan dan saya ingat uh, telah dibawa ke PPKA. In fact, uh, masa kami buat bengkel tu pun, uh, staff PPKA yang membantulah uh, memberi tunjuk ajar macam mana nak sediakan. Jadi bila saya uh, refer balik hasil daripada uh, apa ni, uh, ceramah pagi ni, ni uh, saya dapati saya punya kursus ni, uh, dia punya... Uh, PTG tu uh, untuk learning material 52, learning activities 35, assessment 11 saja. Jadi adakah saya perlu mengubah apa yang telah di apa ni uh, disenaraikan ini untuk memenuhi 40 40 20 tadi itu? So, ada uh, stand fakulti macam mana Dr. Dar? Ada ke Dr. Dar? Dr. Dekan kan boleh jawab. Ha. Mati dia lah jawab. Ha. <laughs> Lama menyesal saya buka, saya disuruh menjawab. <laughs> Oke, okay. uh, untuk uh, table 4, uh, saya rasa kita sudah majukan juga itu uh, galakan daripada surat daripada PPK untuk uh, menggalakkan penggunaan table 4. Tapi kalau tengok uh, pembentangan uh, pagi tadi, masih ada lagi perlu penambahbaikan uh, daripada PPK kan. Macam assessment tadi itu perlu ada lagi yang perlu ditambah untuk Uh, apa tu supaya uh, SLT 8, 8 SLT itu dapat di capture uh, saya rasa ada lagi uh, beberapa isu tu kan Puan Salmi dan untuk uh, sebenarnya untuk perubahan SLT adalah bukan dikira sebagai perubahan besar so tidak perlu dilaporkan ke PPKE dan boleh uh, dilaksanakan di peringkat fakulti sahaja menjawab ke itu Dr. Ben ya, terima kasih So bolehlah dimurnikan ni. Terima kasih. Ya, boleh dimurnikan. Kita akan uh, buat uh, uh, bengkel lah uh, semester depan uh, supaya kita boleh implement untuk uh, sesi yang akan datang tapi kita masih lagi menunggu penambahbaikan daripada uh, PPKM mengikut komen-komen tadi lah. Ya, Sal. Hari itu ya. bila kita terima apa tu mandat daripada PIP tentang table board tu kan. Aku punya TD ini pandai mengkaji. Mm. Dia bilang macam mana ni dia bilang tengok ni pun tak ada yang macam tidak betul lagi Ini table for orang ini mm. uh, Tak apalah kita bagi saya orang tapi jangan lupa kita pakailah di fakulti dia bilang Jadi ya kita pun faham Ya lah saya sebutkan tadi uh, Benda ni 
agak pro, apa itu progresif banyak benda yang kadang-kadang datang kemudian kan dia kena susun balik dan masukkan di dalam uh, table four. Jadi, syukur juga lah kami belum pakai lagi tapi saya tahu band ni laju <laughs> kena ubah sesuai lagi lah itu band nah, tadi ada lagi table four pemain baru tu tambahan baru tu kena susun lagi balik lah jadi bertahan saja kamu orang dari aqua culture <laughs> yang lain-lain ni saya tidak boleh tidak kena buat juga lah semua. So mudah-mudahan kita dapat yang latest punya tambahan yang kita bincang tadi itu untuk anticipate benda-benda yang kita tertinggal. Jadi ialah benda baru. Memang kadang-kadang sebaik mana pun kita buat ada juga yang tertinggal. <laughs> ya. So okay lah nanti kita akan anilah buat sesi lah untuk apa tu untuk semua macam mana kita nak tambah baik kita punya table post supaya meet itulah adjustment kepada SLT sikit uh, jadi macam tadi si Jun pun memanglah Jun kita diberikan kelonggaran tapi kalau kita tidak ada alasan yang yang kuku sengaja-sengaja mau ambil yang 173 saja uh, uh, 1, 1732 gitu uh, mm. uh, sengaja-sengaja mau yang itu tidak boleh juga lah uh, tidak ada alasan yang konkret mah Uh, mau, es- mau escape saja. Jadi saya pikir kita pun tadi kita pun diberikan makluman tentang direction ministry dan juga direction kementerian uh, termasuklah yang isu yang panas dibincangkan di peringkat kementerian sekarang yang dua tu tu you apa tu you to hedge itu. To edge. So dan direction kita kepada ODL. Jadi maksudnya kita tidak ada banyak pilihan melainkan kita kena berubah uh, dan juga kreativiti kita dalam menyampaikan PDP itulah uh, cuma mungkin itulah kita mengharapkan supaya peralihan ini disokong dengan training yaitu yang saya minta tadi dengan Salto supaya ada proper training dan sekarang ini pun walaupun itu uh, IDP itu macam tidak wajib untuk konekan pangkat kan tapi dia tidak juga dikeluarkan daripada BSM punya apa keperluan pembelajaran sepanjang hmm. hayat jadi eloklah kita bincanglah dengan BSM lah supaya benda itu captured kita ikut dapat juga marka tiap tahun kan uh, uh, jadi uh, mungkin tahun ini kita belajar TikTok tahun depan kita belajar benda lain pula kan <laughs> GPT sudah prof uh, 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 belajar GPT uh, pula lah uh, itu pun kena belajar juga macam mana tu uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, prof uh, sebenarnya prof uh, dalam dalam pelaksanaan uh, PTG ni sebenarnya prof uh, uh, memang kita uh, apa, menuju menuju ke arah sebenarnya ODL kan uh, flexibility tu uh, apa, kita mempromosikan flexibility dalam pembelajaran uh, dalam kalangan kalangan pelajar kita dan juga pada masa yang sama membantu kita uh, yang Contohnya kalau ada perancangan untuk pergi ke menghadiri conference yang tu memang kita kena kena lakukan. Jadi persoalannya seperti mana yang uh, telah Puan Salmi cakap tadi uh, tidak ada uh, apa tu uh, garis panduan yang mengatakan kita boleh menggantikan kita punya uh, kelas tu kan. Uh, jadi PTG datangnya PTG ini adalah untuk menjawab kepada persoalan itu. PTG sebab PTG 30% tu memang kita boleh melaksanakan uh, gantian uh, sedangkan blended learning kita sebelum ni adalah dalam bentuk sokongan sahaja jadi kita tidak boleh nak mengganti apa yang kita amalkan tu macam minta maaf cakap belakang tu <laughs> begitu ya yeah. Dr Heri ada apa-apa nak Heri tadi ada angkat tangan dua tiga kali sudah saya nampak dia angkat tangan <laughs> okey uh, tak pagi ya yeah, ya yeah. Saya nak tanya pasal yang video sepuluh minit tu. Uh, soalan yang pertama, yang video sepuluh minit tu adakah maksudnya satu video sepuluh minit ataupun dia boleh accumulate video lima minit, lima minit jadi sepuluh minit. Itu soalan pertama dia. Soalan kedua dia, um, kalau lah pelajar yang uh, sudah graduate, sebab dia buat video bagus pada kami yang tak pandai buat video ni. Jadi dan video dia boleh dijadikan bahan pengajaran. Adakah video itu boleh digunakan sebagai bahan pengajaran? Saya tak tahu etikanya betul tak betul. Jadi saya tanya. 
Itu saja soalan saya. Thank you. Uh, terima kasih. Uh, boleh saya menjawab yang tu ya. Eh? Pertama sekali adalah tentang uh, jumlah video durasi 10 minit tu. Uh, jumlah uh, video durasi 10 minit adalah untuk contohnya satu uh, topik ya, eh? untuk satu PTG lah dalam 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 konteks ni saya menggunakan contoh PTG. Uh, 10 minit tu bermakna satu satu uh, bukanlah satu video 10 minit. Dia kombinasi kata ada dua video 3 minit, 3 minit Uh, tiga minit uh, pun boleh. Tetapi uh, pada masa yang sama kita perlu uh, mempertimbangkan uh, the nature of our student jugalah ya doktor. Bagaimana uh, student kita boleh menerima video-video uh, begitu. Tetapi ada cara dia doktor ya. Nanti kita akan uh, adakan juga uh, khusus untuk ini yang menggunakan uh, H5P itu di mana dalam video itu kita boleh pause kita boleh pause dan ada ada aktiviti jawapan soalan dan sebagainya dan sambung balik video. Ada ada berbagai-bagai teknik untuk penggunaan dari segi video dalam uh, dalam uh, apa, pengajaran dan pembelajaran uh, kita. Uh, yang kedua ya doktor, uh, soalan tentang bagaimana uh, boleh atau persoalan sama ada boleh ataupun tidak kita menggunakan balik video yang telah dihasilkan oleh pelajar. Uh, yang ini uh, memang ia melibatkan uh, elemen uh, etik dekat sana. Yeah. Uh, the most important thing adalah concern lah daripada pelajar itu, uh, kumpulan pelajar itu ataupun individu pelajar itu dan yang keduanya uh, sebaik-baiknya video-video uh, ini yang telah dibina uh, oleh pelajar ini uh, diberikan CC license. Yeah. Seperti mana yang uh, Puan Eugenia telah jelaskan pada awal tadi. Uh, jadi apabila pelajar menggunakan CC license maksudnya uh, kita lebih selesa menggunakan balik video-video yang telah dihasilkan oleh uh, pelajar. Uh, mungkin uh, Puan Eugenia ataupun Prof ada Prof uh, Fung uh, nak add anything on that? Uh, thank you, thank you Encik Amin. Yes, uh, it's a very important question because it's uh, ada legal implikasinya. So in the training coming up for our TOT champion, uh, we will be training you on how to actually pakai uh, copyright licensing and especially the alternative panggil CC licensing. Now, uh, just one statement. Semua item-item uh, online diambil kira sebagai copyrighted. Apa artinya copyrighted? It means that kalau you nak pakai image itu, you nak pakai artikel itu, you mesti dapat kebenaran approval, written approval from the author. Basically, it's number one. Nah? You must get the approval. Now, if the materials are produced and then we tell our student, nah, hey, please license it using CC licensing. Okay, so let's say CCBY. That means that anybody can use it tanpa mendapat kebenaran. CC license means nah, the approval already given already. Go ahead, use it. But you must cite my name, CCBY, lah, let's say. Okay. I think uh, this, this will be touched uh, during our TOT training. Thank you. Okay, Prof. Um, sekarang sudah jam 12 nih. Hari Jumat pula hari ini, kan? Lupa. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So, uh, okay lah, saya repak ini. Saya mewakili rakan-rakan lah daripada Fakulti Sains. Begitu juga daripada Institut pun ada nih. Uh, bagi pihak fakulti kami amat menghargai apa tu sesi pada pagi ini dan kami mengucapkan setinggi tinggi terima kasih kepada Profong dan juga pasukan dia uh, Tuan Amin, uh, Puan Sal uh, dengan uh, Yujin uh, yang 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 apa tu memberikan uh, banyak pembelajaran pada kami dan penerangan lah uh, supaya orang bilang lebih jelas tentang konsep PTG yang akan kita praktis nanti dan kita akan laksanakan nanti. Dan mudah-mudahan selepas daripada ini, kita susuli dengan training lah yang yang dimaksudkan tadi. Saya pun sudah setuju nak bagi tren TikTok <coughs> dan yang lain-lain lah <laughs> semua itu. Dan di peringkat fakulti sudah tentu sebenarnya kita pun tidak ada banyak pilihan sebenarnya. Uh, ini agenda ini bukan juga agenda fakulti, bukan agenda profung. Uh, ini adalah agenda kebangsaan yang di, di, disalurkan oleh Kementerian uh, Pengajian Tinggi dan tidaklah 
tujuan dia adalah memastikan PDP ini berjalan dengan lancar dan selari dengan perkembangan teknologi yang sedia adalah dan juga perkembangan pendidikan seluruh dunia. Jadi um, bukanlah baru, uh, syukurlah kita go through itu pasal apa tu endemik itu. Dia mengajar kita banyak benda <laughs> dan uh, memberikan kita ilmu yang banyak dan kreativiti baru yang perlu kita apa tu masalah yang kita perlu pelajari. Jadi uh, saya rasa uh, mungkin kita uh, apa tu tangguh dulu kita punya sesi ini dengan sesi-sesi yes. yang seterusnya bagi pihak fakulti sekali lagi terima kasih Prof Wong dan semua tim terima kasih banyak karena memberikan ruang pada kami pada pagi ini um, ada apa-apa lagi nih ini Rustia saya pulangkan pada Rustia lah kalau ada apa-apa lagi ambil gambar ke apakah ya ya kita ambil gambar dulu kali kan ada um, Jack Richard boleh tolong bantu. Okey, uh, minta semua buka kamera. <laughs> Dr. Sarima wajib. <laughs> Okey, okay, semua join. Ya. Okay, ready? One. Ya, kita tunggu lagi, kita tunggu lagi. Hmm. Oke, okay, ready? One, two, three. Berapa pes kita nih? Banyak pes kah? Oke okay, kan sudah Encik Richard. Sudah kan nih? Tarik tahan apa sudah dari tadi? Jelas banget. Sudah dapat buka kamera. Amat pernah sudah aku bersenyum nih. <laughs> Oke, okay, alright. Thank you. Yeah, Terima kasih. Thank you, Prof. Terima kasih. 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 Ter